Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me on this live stream. Hopefully you can hear me all right. I'm never sure about the sound on these things. You never know until you're actually live just how good the sound is. But thanks for joining me. Let's see who's in the chat. We've got Rob Potatoes. Hi, everyone. And the Infector 07. Hello. Now, answer a question for me, the Infector 07. Are you the Infector 07 because they're already the Infector 1 through 6? Or is it because, you know, 7 is the amount of people you infect at any one time? Let me know so I can know how to avoid you and others with your name. <laughs> how are you doing? Let me know in the chat how you're all doing. And thank you again for joining me as I return to this live streaming game. It's been a couple of weeks. Uh, it's been a wee while. Uh, I went away to an undisclosed location, but those of you who watch the YouTube channel, Just Interesting, will discover in the relatively near future at which location I was. And then after I got back from that, work obviously piled up uh, whilst I've been away. And then last week, I really wanted to squeeze a live stream in, but wasn't able to uh, because there's just too much to do. But thankfully, I'm back. And I'm back, hopefully with a bang, as we take on Resident Evil in board game form. Although Resident Evil 3, uh, this is, again, I'm be playing on a, a platform called Tabletopia, which is available on stream or just as a web browser. I'm playing in the web browser. Uh, you can play it for free you, or you can subscribe. And if you subscribe, you get access to more games. Um, but for some reason, they've only got Resident Evil 3, the board game on Tabletopia. Don't know why they don't have the other games. I believe there are board games based upon uh, the first couple of Resident Evil games. Um, weirdly, until I discovered this game, I hadn't thought how well suited the Resident Evil property actually is to board games, in theory, because there's a whole genre of the Dungeon Explorer, right, board game, where you have a map, which is a board, and you walk through the rooms, and there are monsters in those rooms, the kind of kick down the door type game, where you you open a room and find out what's inside. And in fact, there are there's a whole series of very popular games, I own one of them, um, called Zombicide, which are all about board games where you fight zombies and in urban environments as well quite similar to Resident Evil 3 in particular which I think is the one that's set in Raccoon City isn't it or is that Resident Evil 2 let me know I can't confession I haven't actually played Resident Evil 3 I'm really sorry I haven't so it'll be interesting to know if there are any um quirks to this game that uh, make sense to people who've played the Resident Evil 3 game video game that is um, and don't make sense to me as someone who hasn't played it. Uh, Rob Potato says, I'm good, thank you. And uh, the Infecto 07 says, in answer to my question, oh no, lol, this, the name sounds really bad these days. <laughs> uh, but there was a game mode in Halo back in the day called Infected, and I played a lot of it. 07 just comes from the amount of people that had it before. So there were six other people, at least, called the Infector. That's, um, that's kind of weird. But uh, I never, I don't think I played the Infector mode in Halo, but I do remember Halo very fondly. I had the, um, I think I had the PC remake, because they had, I remember being able to toggle between new graphics and old graphics uh, on the version of Halo that I had. But I had this and played it on my first laptop back in the noughties, so it must have been only the second iteration of the first Halo game, right? Because they remade Halo again, haven't they? Isn't there another remake of Halo coming out? Come out? I don't know. Let's not talk about Halo. We're here to play Resident Evil. Hmm. And speaking of which, let's head over to the game. <gasps> there it is. Shocking. Shockingly beautiful. Uh, if we zoom in, you can see some lovely, lovely things. This is the map I was talking about. And miniatures, although obviously these are digital versions of the miniatures in the game, and they're pretty cool actually. Uh, there's Jill Valentine. Um, I'll be playing. Well, actually, I'll be I'll be controlling all the human characters um, against the monsters in this. But um, I like to think of myself as I'm Jill Valentine, obviously, in this in this situation. Um, that's a, that's yeah, that's a very nice sculpt. Um, if I zoom in any further, it's going to look very pervy so i'm gonna back off there and then we've got arnold schwarzenegger from commando here um can we 
can we turn him around? Can I? I want to see his face. But he's just he's just holding Arnold's thing from Commando. And remembers that movie. Hey, go now, let's go. Look, thanks for joining. How you doing? Uh, so, this is the game. I was reading the rules uh, just before <laughs> just before streaming. Uh, so hopefully I've learned them well enough to be able to explain them and play the game properly. The object of the game is very simple. Uh, I have to get my four human characters, who are these grey ones. Uh, they're the, the team of special operatives who work for the people they work for in the game. I can't remember in the video game who Jill Valentine and the other characters work for. Um... And they look pretty cool. Whoa, this guy's got blood on him. Wow. But they all have blood on them. That's kind of cool. A bit odd. That must have been... Whoever made these character models for this uh, digital version of the game must have had fun putting some blood spatters on them. Um, so we've got some special commandos, I guess. Uh, and they are, those are their starting spaces. And the aim is to get off the board. To survive, basically. Just to get off the board. And the exit is right here this tile here with this exit symbol on it. Oh look, that's familiar. Uh, as you can see, this exit though is in a room with a couple of enemies in. One of whom is just a zombie lady. The other of whom looks like a big, big, scary nemesis. Ah! So it's going to be a boss fight. It's going to be a boss fight at the end. Uh, but to get to them, first I have to make it through these these rooms here. And these rooms have zombies in. Hopefully I can kill them. Now there are four playable characters. I'm going to be controlling them all. Um, they have character sheets, which look like this. They each have special abilities, and they each have starting items. Jill Valentine, for example, starts with a knife, a handgun, and... First aid spray, which you can use to heal a character in the same or adjacent square by three levels, or resuscitate an unconscious character. First aid spray? Is that real? That's not a real thing, is it? Well, someone's dead or dying, you just spray them. That's not a thing. If it is, then technology really has come a long way since I was a child. I'd love that to be the case. Bad for the ozone, though. So, very bad. Uh, here's her handgun. Uh, now, that looks like a bit of a daunting card, but it's actually relatively simple. This just These symbols here just describe the range, which is line of sight, uh, the number of dice that you roll when you attack, which is one, and the damage it does when you roll the dice. Because the dice aren't regular dice. They don't have um, numbers on them. They have symbols as you can see here, hopefully. And if we flip them over, they'll keep rolling the same symbol, never mind. The dice are loaded! Uh, and then we have health charts, and that's what that health uh, first aid spray, <laughs> first aid spray, the shark repellent bat spray, um, does. Your health is actually this kind of medical chart, which is a pretty cool health meter, I have to admit. And when you start off in fine, you're nice healthy green, and you're slightly less healthy green, then you go into caution, which is yellow, then orange, and then danger. And I'm guessing that when you take enough damage that you would move off the chart, that's when you become unconscious. Uh, and then we also have an ammo tracker, which is cool. It's like a dial. Uh, that's, that's actually really cool. I like that. Uh, but I'm um, start at empty, so I'm going to have to reload my gun at the beginning of the game. And the enemies on the board are zombies, which shuffle about, causing trouble, and nemesis. Da, da, da. Oh, hello, Nuckin, how are you doing? Psychotic Puppy, hey, good morning from California, Robin. I didn't even know there was a Resident Evil board game. Lol. Exactly. It's it's crazy. It's actually, I feel like it's a growing genre of video games being turned into board games. Doom did it. Dark Souls did it. I, I assume Bloodborne did it. Resident Evil has done it. 
And I, it's definitely done it for Resident Evil 2 and 3, and it may have done it for the first Resident Evil as well. Don't know if it's done it for Resident Evil 4 or um, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. What, what Resident Evil are we on now? We're on quite a few Resident Evils now, aren't we? Um, what other video games have done it? I feel like there are other video games that have done it, but I can't think right now. Yeah, it's, it's a growing subgenre of games, and it's kind of... It makes a lot of sense, right? It makes a lot of sense uh, because they're games. They should be transferable between different media. But it also kind of doesn't make sense because I'd say video games are immersive in a way that board games can't possibly be. And therefore board games offer things that video games don't offer because they're a, they're a different experience. Um, however, I'm a mad fan of games like this where there's a pretty board uh, with nice graphics and cool miniatures and you run around killing monsters and enemies. I like that. Uh, Psychotic Puppy says, I've heard of the Doom game, but this is cool. Ah, oh, well, let's find out, shall we? So, interestingly, and this is something I've not encountered before, there is no enemies phase in this game. Normally in games like this, you have players go and then the enemies go, and normally there's some AI system for the... Uh, for the enemies, for the zombies in this case. And there is an AI system for the zombies, but it's really simple and actually takes place in your turn. So the turn is broken down into three phases. There is the action phase, the reaction phase, and the tension phase. And the action phase is me, I do my thing. The reaction phase is the zombies reacting to anything that I do. And then the tension phase is there's a big fat deck of cards right here which uh, I draw a card and find it, it, it does something oh, yeah it, it has some kind of in-game effect and we'll find out but first let's meet our team let's find out who we are I, I, we've mentioned Jill Valentine obviously boob lady I mean lady whoops and we've got Mikhail Victor Victor I suppose I should say and his special rules say that he's tough when he suffers two or more damage from an attack you reduce the damage by one. Okay, that's that's actually pretty cool. Uh, he's a tough guy. And then last stand. When Mikhail's health track is in the danger zone, danger zone, he may re-roll a die when performing an attack. He must keep the result of the second roll. That's actually cool. That means as he's dying, he's like, ah, I'm gonna fight more fiercely. That's actually. That sounds like it could be incredibly useful. So I'm going to have to use Mikhail like, a bit like a tank. And then there's Nikolai Gino. Yep. Are they all Russian in the game? Is this a thing? I didn't realize this Resident Evil had a bunch of Russian characters. Anyway, uh, so Nikolai is a supervisor. And once per scenario, so per game essentially, Nikolai may discard an amber tension card without resolving the effects, then draw another card. Okay, so the tension phase I mentioned, there's that big deck of cards and you draw from it. There are three types of cards in that deck. Green, amber, and red. Green are the best, amber are middling, and red are really bad. And he uh, can discard the amber ones. That could be good, actually. Concealed supplies. At the start of every scenario, Nikolai may draw a card from the item deck and place it in his inventory. I mean... Why wouldn't I? That sounds great. Let's let's do that. Okay. But first, let's check out the final character. It is Carlos Oliveira, combat veteran. After performing an attack, Carlos may use an ammunition item for the weapon used in the attack without spending an action. So he can get he gets a free reload when he attacks something. That's cool. Um, he also is resourceful and gains one additional point of ammunition when he reloads with a gunpowder item. Nice. That sounds useful. <laughs> Just have to remember these special rules. Controlling four characters, that's the hard part when you're trying to try and remember everything. Right, so. Let's start the game. Uh, so Jill, let's start with Jill. She's got four actions. Every character has four actions. And she, there's a zombie right here. We have to go... These red lines are hard walls that we can't get through. We can't see through them. We can't move through them. And there's a door here. That's what this thing is. And when I get to it, I can open it, flip it over, and it's an open door. You can really see the difference there, can't you? Open, shut. Right. Uh, 
There's also these toxic tiles. I don't know what those toxic tiles do. Okay. That wasn't in the rules, so we'll ignore those for now. So Jill's got four actions. When you're in the same space as a zombie, they will attack you. So it makes sense to try to kill this zombie from a distance, right? So let's do move one. But I need to load her gun because her gun is currently empty. So luckily she has no ammunition. Ah, okay. Ah, shoot. She's got a knife. Let's use the knife. Okay. Ooh, this could go badly. Oh, already I'm feeling like this is off to a bad start. She has no ammo. Ah. So one action to step up. Two actions to step into the zombie area. Um, and now I'm going to attack with the knife. To do that, I just simply roll the die. Ah, oh, for Pete's sake. That did nothing. I need to roll this symbol here. This bullet hitting a thing symbol. And I rolled a stupid arrow symbol, which is a separate action later. Um, okay. Uh, attack again, I guess. Ooh, that did damage. Bullet holes. Okay, well, when you roll that on the knife, look. See, so I rolled this result. And I did one damage. Great. Now the zombie has one health. So I just killed that zombie. Nice. I don't like the fact, I don't know if you can see this, when the game is launches and set up, there are three zombies off the board. I don't like that. That would indicate that at some point more zombies can come onto the board. So she just spent all her four actions. Uh, now we're on to this fellow who I assume is Michael, with his big rocket launcher. Uh, one, two, three, four. Let's just go to that door. Let's just get there. Uh, now let's use Nikolai, who is... Is that, is that Nikolai? Yeah, yeah, that's Nikolai. Okay. Uh, we'll just cross here. And, oh, okay. If I open the door... All the zombies in a connected room, which is only one, admittedly, will see me. Oh, you know, I before the game gets to, let's, I may have done something wrong. I think, let's just check the quick reference. Action phase. And then reaction phase, tension phase. No, I think I do. I was, just, I was just thinking like maybe I control one character, action phase, then a reaction phase, then a tension phase, and then I do the next character and do an action phase, reaction phase. But it sounds like it says characters may perform up to four action. So it sounds like you just do the, all the characters all at once. I think. I'm just going to cheekily use your time pausing for a moment um, to check the rules <laughs> and make sure that that's how it's done. All the, all the characters uh, activate at the same time. Uh, let's just check that. Oh, no, no, yep. Yeah. They take alternating turns, so before Mikhail did his... Oh, no, no, yep. Yeah. Something repeating. So before Mikhail did his thing, um, I should have uh, reacted with the zombies, but there were no zombies because I just killed it. And no zombies can see me behind this closed door. But I do have to draw a card. So first attention card, what's it going to be? All clear. The horrors you've seen weigh upon you, but so too do they provide resolve and determination. Okay, cool. Yeah, 
I'm cool with that. That was a surprisingly gentle start. Yes. Uh, Ren Fizzlebork, hello, welcome. Are you? I don't think we've chatted before. You must have joined. Have you joined? Have you watched a stream by Alex? Maybe. Um, how long is the rule book in this game? <laughs> it's it's a good one. Now, uh, that's a very good question. I I have to confess, we can't make a proper judgment because this rule book is five pages, including an FAQ. But this is the uh, demo description. So the full rule book is not five pages, it's longer. But I can't imagine it being much longer, to be honest, because there's all the basic rules are here in these five pages. So it's probably about, I don't know, about a 10 page rule book, maybe 12, which is a decent length, I think. Um, so far, so good. I'm actually impressed at how they managed to distill the functions of the game into so few rules. But it may be that clever balance here. This may be one of those games that has a lot of stuff printed on the cards, which is clever. And I like that kind of thing. I think it's, um, I think you want to, you, when you're playing a board game, the less you have to go back to the rule book and flick through it and look at the index, the better. So if rules are printed on cards and things and you, res you resolve them when you draw the cards, brilliant. That's great. I like that. Um, I like that kind of thing. Okay, so that was fine. Mikhail did his thing, so we draw another tension card. All clear! The horrors you've seen weigh upon you, but so too do they provide resolve and determination. Well, I mean, I'm so resolved and determined right now. I'm just gonna waltz through this. So now Nikolai, he's gonna walk up to that door. That's one action. He's got three more. Does Nikolai have a loaded gun? Let's find out. He has one shot in his gun. Ah, mm. oh, he's got a knife as well. Yeah, Nikolai, he's gonna knife it. He's gonna knife this sucker in the back. Look at that. He's not even looking at the door. You won't be able to hear Nikolai coming. Just like his wife. Open the door for action number two. Action number three, step into the same space as this zombie and knife him. And then I realize now that actually this is his final action. So if he doesn't kill him with this knife attack now, the zombie is going to attack him back. That's probably not a good idea. Did he do it? He did! I think. Now what did he do? He did this damage, which pushes the zombie one space away. That's... that's... okay, that's fine. Uh, he didn't kill him, which is annoying, but... Zombie can only attack you if they're in the same space, and then in the reaction phase, which we're about to have now, uh, the zombie will simply move towards the nearest enemy, uh, visible enemy, that is. And obviously that's Nikolai, and the zombie um, has one space of movement, so it'll just move back into that space. And, and that's it. Cool. Uh, so now it is Carlos's turn. One. <sighs> Does he have a gun? He has a loaded gun. Let's not shoot on this zombie. I think we can double team this zombie, so to speak. Because he has, because he doesn't have to open this door, he can move into this space. Let's just shuffle that zombie back a bit. And attack this zombie with a knife twice. Because that was his second action. So let's just... Do roll, you missed, roll again, he missed twice, oh my gosh, Carlos, you useless, useless man, attacking a zombie with a knife and you missed twice when he's just standing there and he's distracted by Nikolai. <sighs> Stupid man. Okay, reaction phase. Zombie gets to attack. Zombie will attack. It, I get to choose when the zombie has two targets. Nikolai... Um, at least Nikolai pushed the zombie away. Carlos, you just missed with a knife at point-blank range against a shuffling zombie. So 
you're going to get attacked. Carlos, you're going to take a point of damage. We're now in the less green zone. But after every time a, an enemy attacks you, you take a point of damage, or however many damage, points of damage it says, the game says they inflict, and then you push that enemy away. And I think, if I remember Resident Evil well, that's a lot like the game, you know, when you're in a... When you get close quarters, they kind of like, arr, 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 and you get... You, you kind of wrestle with them, and then you, you can push them off, and then you can shoot them or melee attack them. That and that's how it works in the video game, I think. So that's that's a kind of nice kind of nice touch. That's a incorporating part of the character of the video games into the board game, uh, unlike any other zombie um, board game I've played. So, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, this little tile here, by the way, means there's an item there. Oh, I forgot to draw Nikolai's tension card. Oops. So. Oh, is that all clear as well? It was. What? All clear. I don't know how to feel about this. I've drawn three all clears in a row, and I feel like I should shuffle the deck, but at the same time, it's quite nice to start the game without getting ass handed to you. Okay. Oh yeah, another all clear. Okay, four all clears in the first four turns. Why just shuffle this deck? Because I don't want all the green cards to come out at once. Because um, then I end up screwed, right? Later in the game when all the bad cards come out. So, let's go for Jill again. She's... She can move two spaces to join... Um, Michael in front of the door. She can open the door but then she can't do anything, and the zombie will see. So, but she needs some ammo. Okay, so I need to, Jill needs to search that item. Hopefully it'll be ammo. Is Jill gonna, I mean, got to open the door. We've got to make progress. Okay, so Jill's opening the door with her third action and she's stepping into the room, which is a big risk. No, she's gonna get attacked if I do that. No, she's gonna stay in the room. Take it slow and steady, slow and steady. Because then the zombie will react and move towards them. There we go. And then we draw our first tension card post shuffle. Swifto the Slow is in the chat. Hello there. Hello, Swifto. How are you? Have you played Resident Evil 3, the video game, or the board game, or both? Please do let me know. It's another all clear. Oh, with different text this time. For a precious moment, all is strangely quiet and at peace, even the relentless wind calmed. That seems odd since she just opened the door and the zombies just shuffled in front of it. And she was like, ah, I feel calm. And Mikhail is just like, why are you walking around with outloaded gun? What are you doing, lady? So Mikhail's going to bring his massive bazooka, which he doesn't actually have, to bear on his turn. Because all Mikhail has is a handgun, which is also unloaded. I mm, yeah okay, but he does have some handgun bullets. Increase this character's handgun or Eagle 6.0 ammunition dial by eight points. Right, so yeah, he's going to use. Um, I think that gets discarded. Can he reload his handgun? Eight points on his dial. There you go. He's got eight bullets in his handgun. And he's going to... Swift over slow says, I have done... Not... I have not done either of these things, but I have watched plays of the first one just for the amazing acting. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the uh, the original Resident Evil has um, some of the, the worst and therefore some of the best acting ever in the history of video games and acting. Um, I miss, I miss those days. Little Miss Stella's in the chat. Hi, Robin in chat. Hi, Little Miss Stella. How you doing? Thanks for joining. Um, I, I miss those days when, you know, at the time when terrible acting was in video games, it was laughable. It was lovable, but it was laughable and it was awful. And you think, think, come on, people, you can do better than this. And now the standard of acting is so high and you kind of like, 
I want to be able to feel like I could do this. <laughs> you know, I, I want to be one of those people doing the terrible voice acting in a video game. That would be fun. Psychotic Puppy says, Hope you enjoy the game, Robin. Got to go to work, but I'll watch the rest on my lunch. Lol. Oh, thanks, Psychotic Puppy. Yes, thanks for taking the time during your working day. Hope work goes well and don't work too hard. I mean, you know what I mean. Obviously, do your work, but don't work too hard for the man. And I'll see you later. Mm. So, Mikhail just loaded his gun for his first action. He's going to take his second action by stepping through the door. I don't want to waste my ammunition yet. So his third action will be a knife action again. Ba -ba 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 -da -da. Knife this zombie and he missed. Oh my gosh. How hard is it to knife a zombie? Yay! He did some damage! Woo! Although I think that's just the yeah, he rolled that result, which means he pushes it away one space. I mean, at least that clears the way for Jill. Lilla Mistella says, I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I am enjoying being back on the streaming. It's been a couple of weeks and I've missed it. I've missed it. I, I wanted to do it last week, but um, didn't have the time. Work was too busy. Um, Swift Over Slow says, voice acting in old days is enjoyable, like watching some cheesy B movie. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, Swift or Slow, voice acting in old games is enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, yes, of course. Um, and it's funny, uh, on a side note, I was playing a game recently, a video game, Arkham Horror Mother's Embrace, which is a video game version of a board game. Weird reversal there, it's given I'm doing the board game version of a video game. Maybe I'll play Arkham Horror. Maybe I'll do a stream of Arkham Horror uh, Mother's Embrace, if you're interested. Because I, I enjoy the board game version. Although there's several different board games in the Arkham Horror worse. Anyway, and the voice acting uh, was really criticised in a lot of the reviews that I was listening to. They were saying, oh, terrible flat voice acting. And I was like, actually, the voice... I, when I was playing, I thought the voice acting was actually very good. It was fine. It was better than average. I think it's just... Again, standards are so high that game critics and gamers, who aren't critics but just game a lot, uh, criticise the voice acting in video games because they're used to, you know, A-list Hollywood stars, you know, doing the, the motion capture and the performances. Uh, and, and that's good, don't get me wrong, but not everything has the budget of a triple-A title or a quadruple-A title and can hire uh, an A-list actor to be in their game or do complicated motion capture with really expensive animation after the fact. Anyway, so that was... Uh, all four actions for Mikhail, and there's still a zombie there. The zombie will react by moving into his space. At least the damage has not been done. And then we draw a tension card, because it's the end of his turn. And all clear again. The lights here are strong and bold. Their glare undiminished, even as others falter around them. That's quite a nice bit of flavour text there. The, the idea that you're in, you happen to be in a room where the lights are working, <laughs> so you feel all right. Um, I still feel like... Drawing an all clear when there's a zombie in the same space as you that you just failed to kill and is coming at you feels a little wrong. Okay, let's head over to Nikolai. Nikolai, oh, it's tempting just to shoot this zombie. No, no, Nikolai is going to step in and actually, Nikolai doesn't have any ammunition now that I look at it. So, Nikolai is not going to step in. Nikolai is going to step here. Now, I think the zombie doesn't react until their turn. Yeah. So what we do is we remove this tile from the board because he's going to perform a search action and it corresponds to this deck of cards here. The item deck, item deck A. So let's just give him a shuffle, and we draw an item. And what does he get? Handgun bullets! Yeah, exactly what I was looking for. Fantastic. Okay. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. So we just put those over in his inventory there. And on his card, his character sheet, it says, 
He's got a backpack symbol here and with the number six next to it, which means he can uh, hold six items and he's currently got four, so he's fine. Ooh, okay. Uh, so that was two actions. Action three and attack with his fourth action. He missed. Oh no, that wasn't that one that was a fit, not a roll. He still missed. Okay. Swifto the Slow says, the cards have been fairly forgiving so far. Seems a little suspicious. I know. Well, what you don't know is that I spent the last three hours combing through the decks on this game and rearranging them uh, so that even when I shuffled them electronically uh, with the commands of the Tabletopia game system, uh, it would shuffle them in my favour. I'm actually kind of annoyed because uh, I've had six cards now which are all clear which means I'm probably going to draw six cards, which are the worst cards you could draw, right? Right, at some point. So I'm kind of... I wouldn't mind a slightly even spread. I wouldn't mind getting the all-clear cards when things are a little worse off and I've got less ammo. Anyway, um, so that was his fourth action. Uh, the zombie gets to react. Sadly, zombie will attack, but... Nikolai gets to evade the attack, and I realise that when Carlos was attacked by the zombie last turn, I forgot to do the evade thing, which basically, this symbol here says the number two in it, so Carlos can roll two dice, and if one of them comes up with uh, uh, this arrow symbol, he successfully evades the zombie's attack. Now, I've got to do this for Carlos last turn, but I'm not going to take it back, because Carlos deserved to get damage. Uh, now, another rule is that when you get into, on your health bar, as you get weaker, you'll see on the die, let's, bring, let's pick up a die, I don't know if you can zoom in on this and see if you can, can you see that dice? All right, yeah. Uh, this arrow here is the longest arrow. So when you're on green health, that arrow applies, so if you roll that die when you're evading, it's successful. But if you're in your yellow health, or your yellow and orange health, um, that no longer applies, and it has to be uh, this arrow here. No, other way around, sorry. When you're on full health, this arrow and the other two arrows count. So you've got three different symbols on the die, which means you can evade an attack. When you're in yellow health, this arrow and the really short arrow apply. So you've only got this arrow here. So you've only got two chances of, of, of passing, of evading an attack. When you're in danger in your lowest health, the red health, um, only this arrow counts. When you're evading an attack. So that represents you getting weaker, getting slower as you uh, as you get injured. And I think that's a cool little mechanic there. Uh, I, I assume that's kind of reflected by the core engine mechanics in the video game. Uh, Little Miss Stella says, Resident Evil franchise are my favorite video games to play. Really? Oh, cool. please elaborate. Tell me more. Um, why? Uh, why Resident Evil? Uh, why are they a favorite? And do you, well, have you played them all? And I mean all of them, going back to the 90s. Or are you uh, particularly fond of one generation over another? Because I know they've been remaking them, haven't they? And Resident Evil 4 Remake is going to come out this year? End of this year, I think? Maybe? Um, either that or, the, or early next year. Uh, and the remakes have been fantastic, by all accounts. Although Resident Evil 3 was not as well received because it was a bit of a truncated remake, I think. Um, but the Resident Evil 2 remake was fantastic. Resident Evil 1, interestingly, has been remade, I think, technically twice, hasn't it? Um, they did a kind of... The original version uh, from the 90s was uh, remade for the GameCube and the PS2 in the early noughties. And then they remastered that remake in the last decade, I think, for the PS4 and subsequent generations. But it's essentially the same game, it just looks better. Um, whereas Resident Evil 2, 3, and now 4 have been properly, fully remade from the ground up, haven't they? They're proper remakes. They're stunning. I love that. And I, I want more studios to do that to video games. Swift the Slow says, I have a bad feeling about this. 
Yeah, me too. So let's get on. Sorry, I didn't actually. Nikolai is going to attempt to evade, but he gets to roll two dice. So let's select two dice. Roll them. Excellent. He got an evasion. So he managed to evade the zombies attack. This is great. Uh, now he draws a tension card. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. All clear. Shit. It's not all clear. Pardon my French. Death rattle. An undead hand clutches at you from the darkness, accompanied by a hideous rasp. Spawn a zombie in the same square as this character. Uh -uh. After spawning, the zombie performs a basic attack. Spawn an additional zombie on this tile on the closest toxic symbol. That's what those symbols are. Wait a minute. Do I spawn two zombies then? It says spawn a zombie in the same square as this character. Spawn an additional zombie on this. I do spawn two zombies. Ooh, dear. Suddenly things are not looking so good. I'm glad I picked up that um, item to forget to then use to reload my gun. I should have reloaded the gun. Didn't think to do that. Okay, two zombies. One in the same square, so now Nikolai has two zombies on him. Not good. And one on the nearest square. So there are three zombies suddenly piling up on Nikolai and Carlos. I was a bit too brazen, wasn't I? I shouldn't have gone charging in the way I did. Never mind. Lilla Mistella says, I've played all of the games, just recently played Resi 8. The remake of 4 is out next March. Great, thank you for clarifying that. I wasn't sure when. Um, what do you think of Resident Evil 8? Because um, I know... I think it was very well received, but there was disappointment about um, big vampire lady, um, unexpected sex symbol lady, uh, being in less of the game than people thought. Uh, and there were accusations of false advertising in that respect, weren't there? What do you think about that? So, uh, <laughs> now it's poor Carlos's turn. He has one ammunition. I think I'm going to have to shoot something. There's just too many zombies. So let's use this card to reload, to load eight bullets into my gun. It started on one, so I actually have nine bullets, which is great. And Carlos actually has, gets an additional point of ammunition when he reloads with a gunpowder item. Uh, So he can, oh, uh, wait a second. Combat veteran, after performing an attack, Carlos may use an ammunition item for the weapon used in the attack without spending an action. So basically that means he can reload after attacking and not spend an action. In which case, I'm going to use my first action to attack with his gun and then get a free reload instead of using up an action like I just was, was about to. Right, okay, so he had one bullet, he's gonna fire it, but he also gets one bullet extra when he reloads, so he'll be up nine regardless, so that works out fine for me. So let's shoot a zombie, let's shoot one of the zombies against Nikolai. Uh, oh, sorry, when he shoots he rolls uh, one die. Bloody Carlos, he's gonna miss, isn't he? <sighs> Oh no, he hit it. Okay, that was unexpected. And when he hits it, he pushes it back. So he's just, well, he's gone, ow, and the zombie's gone, Ugh! and then stumbles backwards, as you do. He's got another, then you get the free reload with the additional bullet, so he's back up to nine ammunition. I think I'm gonna shoot again with my second action. He missed, and I just wasted a bullet. So I brought that down to eight. Two more actions. He's got to fight these zombies, right? He's got to. So he'll shoot again at the one in front of Nikolai. Spend another bullet. But I don't I want to save my ammunition if I can. No, oh, I missed again. Uh, oh he's got to yeah. Hmm. No, he's got two actions, so he could step in and try to knife him rather than wasting more bullets. 
I think I have to do that. I think Carlos is going to step in and fall over. <laughs> no. Um, how can I? There we go. Back on his feet. And he's going to shoot Nikolai. No wonder he keeps missing. He's aiming for the wrong person. Uh, and he's going to knife this zombie. Hey, he pushed it back. Oh my gosh. Let's push it back that way. This, these are, it's so hard to kill zombies on this. Harder than I was expecting, actually. Everyone, I was like, everyone starts with a gun. This is going to be easy. But no, it's actually quite tough. These zombies are still here. To be fair, Jill made short work of that zombie at the beginning. But, man. Right. Um, Little Miss Stella says, Resident Evil 2 was the game that got my hooked many years ago, and I've been hooked ever since. Oh, great. And about Resident Evil 8 says, Haha, yeah, the tall lady that everyone was crazy for. I love the game, so it never bothered me that she wasn't the main character in it. But I can see why some would be disappointed. Have you played any of them? So uh, I began this playthrough by confessing that I haven't played Resident Evil 3. I have played not many. In fact, basically none. I've got the <laughs> I've got the Umbrella Core um, you know, multiplayer game, <laughs> which everyone hated. Um, and I played the original Resident Evil on GameCube, uh, friend's GameCube, not mine, and that terrified me. And I played a little bit of Resident Evil 4 on the Wii, actually, but I didn't play much of it because I couldn't get the hang of the Wii controller, and again, this was on a friend's Wii, and, um... I just I got stuck because you have to you have the two controls the two controls like a little one that that you I don't know what you did with that little one. it was like a little button that kind of plugged in with a wire to the main controller that was like a TV remote and if you tilted the Wii remote that would affect the direction your character was facing in and when I played Resident Evil Four um, after a little bit I somehow tilted the remote too far and the crosshairs on the screen and the character whose name I can't remember who you're playing in that game um, kind of suddenly looked at the sky and I couldn't get him to look down again so I was being attacked by this horde of chainsaw wielding mad people and uh, just looking at the sky <laughs> and I could shoot and I could spin around I was turning the remote and trying flicking it and trying to get him to look down again but all that was happening was he was just spinning in circles looking up at the sky shooting the grey clouds whilst all I could hear <laughs> was this vroom, 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 and, and then blood spatters and I was like I think I'm dying but I can't see what's going on I'm just shooting the sky uh, and then I kind of gave up on Resident Evil 4 after that point so no I haven't um, played the Resident Evil games I'm too, too chicken too chicken frankly I would like to um, I've seen the films that counts right I've also seen loads and loads of uh I, I watched the cutscene movies and i watched loads of reviews of them so sometimes i feel like i've played them because i've seen so many reviews and then i remember i actually haven't hmm. okay sorry folks let's um figure out what to do so carlos has just screwed everyone over i mean he's he's pushed the zombies back fine but now the zombies react so they're all just gonna pile in oh no they're not because there's a limit on you can only have four characters, models, in um, in a space at one time. So, um, actually, this zombie is still just, just going to hover there. Kind of bumping up against this invisible wall that restricts more than four people going into a space at any one time. So, at least by staying together, Carlos and Nikolai have prevented a third zombie descending upon them. Ay, ay, ay. And then he draws a tension card. Oh, this that was a horrible tension card, that was. All clear. The firelight dances, and briefly you can stare and forget the unrelenting terror of the city of ruin. Again, I love this flavour text, but it's really inappropriate to the moment Carlos has drawn this card. And um uh, 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 says a laugh, laughing face, you should give them another go. The Resident Evil games. I should, actually. I really should. Um, and I want to. Uh, I just, I need to build up the courage. 
I need to build courage uh, to get scared. I, I definitely, I've watched people play, um, in fact, I think I watched Alex play, Alex Brown, that is from Just Interesting, play uh, Resident Evil 7. And I was content to watch, because at least I can then close my eyes and look away. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, it's like Alien Isolation. I played that, but didn't finish it, because I just, my heart was pounding so much, I was convinced I was going to have a heart attack. And my adrenaline rushes up, I'm just, I just feel like, oh my gosh, I can't cope with this. Um, love watching them. I think they're great games, just can't play them. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to this crappy situation over here. Um, oh man, I feel, I'm so worried about this situation here. I've got to get all four characters off the board alive, folks. Right, uh, let's just double check Jill's special rules, actually. She might have some, something useful. Oh, if Jill rolls that symbol when performing an attack, she may... Ah, oh, she like, does a combat roll into another square. That's useful. So she can go in with the knife, and if she misses... She, with that symbol, she can then roll away. Last escape. The first time Jill becomes unconscious during a scenario, place her health track on danger instead, then place her in an adjacent square. That's very useful. Right. Okay. Jill needs some ammunition, and there's a zombie which Mikhail may need help with. So Jill is going to step into this space and attack this zombie with a knife, which I believe was one die, and she missed. She's going to spend her third action to attack it again with a knife. She pushed it back. That's that's good. Because um, with her fourth action, she's going to move here to head towards this item, which hopefully will be some ammunition. Now, the reason I said it's good that she pushed the zombie away is because if you're in the same space as a zombie and you do anything other than attack them, they get a free attack against you. Uh, reaction, he's going to move towards the nearest person, so back into the square with Mikhail, and then we draw a card. Uh, what do we have? All clear. Even the wind calmed again. So Jill is just really serene right now. That's the second time she's drawn that card. I'd be like, ah, even the wind is calm. I'm inside a police station. I suppose actually she looks like she might be this room. I don't know if you can see it very well. Looks like it might be outside like an outdoor storage room or an indoor storage room. I'm just like this marking on the floor here made me think, well, maybe cars drive here, but actually there are, there's, it's just, there's no room for cars. But it could be outside, like a yard outside. So the wind actually may be appropriate. Okay, back to Mikhail, who, you yeah, know, well, he's got that funky last stand thing. Yeah. Oh, we've got some comments. Let's have a look. Um, Swifto the Slow says, I had Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles on the Wii. It was an on-rails type of game. Oh, yeah, I played that. Yeah, yeah, I'd forgotten about that game. Yeah. Couldn't really get into it, so I traded it for something else. Yeah, I also remember it being pretty bland and bad. Um, so far, that is my only experience playing a Resident Evil game. Almost picked for Resident Evil 4 a few times over the year, but still haven't got it yet. Yeah. Um, I'm the same. I think, if I remember correctly, the problem with the Resident Evil games, for me, as someone who is very late to the game, so to speak, despite having witnessed the first game come out and been part of that whole, like, oh, it's so cool, um, is despite their age, partly because of the remakes, they're still really expensive, and even in the sales, they're quite expensive, and I, I kind of try to curtail my spending on games, uh, so I tend to get things in the sale. And the Resident Evil games, because they're Capcom, they're just never that cheap. Um, Little Miss Stella says to Swifty the Swift the Slow, you should definitely get it next time you have a chance. Okay. And Swifto says, will do. I've seen people play it. Looks good. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, I'm really looking forward to the Resident Evil 4 remake coming out. I think that's going to be quite exciting to see. Uh, anyway, Mikhail is going to... He's got a loaded handgun. Nah, let's just knife this sucker. You know, I'm looking at the handguns and the knives, right? They do exactly the same damage with exactly the same dice roll. The difference is the handgun has greater range. 
Man, I hope there's some better weapons. I admit, when I when I launched this and was going to play it, I did. I thought maybe, you know, it looks like a, an easy version of a survival horror game. But actually, playing it, I feel it feels tough because the items I've got are pretty primitive. Zombies are easy to kill in terms of you. You do one bit of damage. You damage them once. They've got one health, so they're dead. That's fine. But actually, rolling, getting the right roll result on a dice is surprisingly difficult. Anyway, Mikhail's going to uh, do a knife attack. He missed. Second into action. That's a kill. Yeah, that's a kill. Killed this zombie dead. Jill and Mikhail are the kings. So he's got two actions left. I think he's going to walk over here to this door and get ready. Uh, so... Oh, and then he's going to... Ooh, it's an amber card, which Nikolai can ignore. Cornered, a vicious snarl sends a shiver down your spine as you realise your foe has found you once more. Locate the tile closest to the active character, that's Mikhail, where there are enemies but no characters. Remove the enemy on the tile with the highest threat level and place them on his character's tile on the closest toxic symbol square. So that would obviously be the nearest tile with enemies where there are no characters would be this one here. And uh, they're right on the side of this door. And somehow this zombie has teleported to this space here. Wait, what was the wording? On the closest toxic star. So... Actually, it's that one. <laughs> Swift over slow says, you just have to roll the dice better, Robin. It's true. It's true. My, my technique is flawed. <laughs> uh, I mean, that was a cool card. That was cool. Uh, I guess when Nemesis comes in, if that were affecting the Nemesis, that would actually be really cool. That's the way Nemesis kind of operates in the game. The video game, that is. That's that's cool. But it feels a bit odd to just kind of teleport that zombie <laughs> from the other side of the door. Um, anyway. Uh, that's kind of cool. I thought I was safe. I thought I was safe in that room. And now we come to the room of hell. It's actually on fire. In fact, they're standing on a burning car wreckage. I only just noticed. Well. Hmm. Okay. Oh dear, oh dear. How are we gonna... Nikolai, what's his special rule again? He can discard an amber tension card without resolving the effects and draw another card, right. And he's got ammo which he could use to first aid spray and a handgun for one shot. <sighs> Well, he's got two zombies to take care of, so he's got to, he's got to use his knife. Uh, he's going to do. He's, he's stuck in the square, so I'm going to just roll two dice as like his first two actions are going to be to attack. Oh. At least the dice um, are all evade symbol now. Third action, attack. Yay! He pushed a zombie away. Fourth action, I guess. Attack with a knife. Pushed it away. Oh my gosh, this is a slog, isn't it? Pushing them away. I'm just going to examine this die. I want to know how many results there are. Right, so there's... I don't know how to actually rotate this without... Um... Ah, uh, here we go. So it's got one damage result and one push result. Okay, that was the... Oh. Evade. So it's got two push results? Right, so it's got two 
So pushing, I feel like I've been doing a lot of pushing of zombies, but yes, there are two, two sides of the die have push results on. Only one has damage. So actually it's a one in six chance of killing zombies. That's really, yeah, that's actually tough. Right, well, Nikolai's just blown his turn and the zombies react and they move back in. Ugh, for Carlos to take care of. And then we draw, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, it's an amber one. Cornered. Uh, the same thing again. I mean, it's tempting to use Nikolai's ability to ignore this card right now, isn't it? Because they don't need another zombie in this space. They really don't. I think I'm going to use his ability. All clear. For a precious moment, all is strangely quiet and at peace, even the relentless wind calmed. I mean, again, they are outside with that burning car, so at least the wind is appropriate. But, um, okay, I'm glad that paid off. I ignored the bad card and got a good card. That paid off. Phew. Right, uh, now it's Carlos's turn. Uh, oh, uh, mm, I don't know. What? I just don't, I don't have any confidence in Carlos. I know he's done some stuff, but... He's going to knife him. He's going to use all four actions, basically. I mean, let's say, I'm going to use two actions because there are two zombies and hope that they both come up the right way. Let's roll these dice, shall we? He, whoa, well, they were both pushes. He pushed them both out. That's actually cool. I'm going to push, actually, I'm going to push them both into this square here. Oops. Uh. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's just, um, I mean, they're zombies. They can lie down, but. He's, he's, he's getting, he's getting confused. He's, oh gosh, what's going on? Sorry, this, I feel like this happens almost every time when I stream on Tabletopia with miniatures. Let's see if I can drop him and make him fall on his base. Ah, almost, almost. Yeah. Skills. See, that's the kind of skill you can't put on a CV or resume. If only I could. I'd have so many jobs. Okay. Zombies are now herded into that corner. I think it's time to make a break for it. Um, Carlos, the successful coward, having pushed the zombies away into a corner, is not going to use his remaining two actions to run to the door. And I think if we can get through this door and then shut it on the zombies, that's the way to go. Nikolai, I'm sorry to leave you behind. Um, at the very least, I can use my gun. All clear. The firelight, the firelight from the car that's on fire, uh, dances. And briefly, you can stare and forget the unrelenting Sarah City room. So Carlos, yeah, he's totally, he's totally abandoning Nikolai. He's like, shove, run. And then, ah, everything's fine. And Nikolai's behind him like, uh, I've still got three zombies next to me. Because, oh crap. No, I'm, well... No, I'm going to stick to it. Because uh, now the zombies react, don't they? And all three of them will go into Nikolai's space. No, I can't abandon him. Can't abandon him. So his next two actions are going to be to shoot. He's going to shoot. He's got to try to get rid of those zombies. Um, so he's going to shoot twice. And hopefully... Uh, He did, he pushed one, which is great, and killed another, which is even better. Well, wow, Nikolai's coming to his own now. He's really on a, like, having a fiery turn. Fantastic. Fantastic. Fiery, that was, was that inappropriate? I don't know. I'm just checking you. Yeah, the special abilities aren't helpful anymore. Oh, if only I could run after killing, after doing that. Okay, now they react. Now, I'm going to assume diagonal movement is not a thing. Most games with a board like this, where their rooms divided into squares, tend not to have diagonal movement. The reason I think diagonal movement is also unlikely is because it means this zombie can't diagonally move into the space with me. <laughs> So I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with that. 
But before I do, I should check the rules. Let's check the rules. Move. Any adjacent square, as long as it, so they do move diagonally. Shoot. So the two zombies back in the square. Female zombie finally gets into the action, though. God, these, these guys are just stuck on this fiery car. Swift Overflow says, Noise! Yeah, I know. Carlos has kind of redeemed himself there. I'm not going to lie. After his disastrous first turn, redeemed himself. He adapted quickly to the scenario. Uh, uh, I drew his tension card already, so we now go back to Jill, who... Despite killing a zombie so far, has felt very useless in this game. She's going to pick up an item. That's her second action. What item does she get? Let's find out. It's a, a green herb. Heal this character or another character in the same or an adjacent square by one level. I have a horrible feeling that's going to be coming in essentially useful later when I start finally fighting this fella. But right now, Jill could really use some ammunition. Um, what's going on here? Why, why have I got some dice in my hand? Ah. There we go. <sighs> uh, yeah. Awkward. Another awkward thing about Tabletopia. The, um... There we go. I mean, that's... He can... Oh, no, that's uh, Mikhail. I meant to put it in... Jill's thing. So now she's the healer. She's got her first aid spray, which is definitely a real thing, and her green herb, which is also... I mean, I guess, I don't know. maybe special forces people do get trained in using herbs to heal. I'm a bit sceptical of that myself. Anyway, that was two actions. She doesn't have a gun, so she can't hurt this zombie from a distance. And she can't... She's got a knife, so she can move into the square with the zombie. But then she can't attack, because she's only got two actions left. And each movement takes an action. So she's just going to move here behind Mikhail, by the door. And again, this zombie will react, head towards us, and maybe we can take care of it without it um, being a problem. Let's do a tension card. It's all clear. The wind is still calming down. Ah, okay. I'm so... I'm actually getting frustrated now how... Like... The tension is actually mounting. I don't know about you, but for me, I'm feeling more tense. Way more tense than I thought I was going to feel playing this. I thought it was going to be quite a fairly easy, breezy game, but actually, it's been. It's. been I'm still in this room, and these guys are still in that room. On that square, in fact, and I feel so dragged down. Um, and every time I draw a tension card, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. And I keep drawing all clears, and then each time, like, I don't. I'm grateful for the all clear, but also I don't want oh, what's coming next, you know? You know? Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, Mikael's turn. If he opens that door, that zombie will see him, so we've got to take care of this woman. Mikael has a gun. <sighs> I don't know if I want to use the ammunition, though. Mikhail's going to step in and use a knife. Ah, oh, he's going to miss. Use it again. He killed her! Mikhail, you bloody beauty! Fourth action. Back into this square. Draw attention card. All clear! Again, the wind is calm for a precious moment, but now it feels entirely appropriate. They've just killed the zombies, they've cleared this room. It's good. Thank 
Goodness, right. Right. They're ready to go into this room with this single zombie. And hopefully uh, reunite with these two who may not make it out of this room alive. <laughs> this burning car wreckage may be the end of them. God. Two grown men with loaded guns and they can't... No, Carlos killed one of them, to be fair. To be fair. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, Nikolai. Swift over slow says the first aid spray is part of the basic military utility belt right next to the shark repellent bat spray. That's exactly how I feel about it. Pass me the shark repellent bat spray. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Nikolai. He's going to use his knife again. Twice. Two actions. Misses both. Two more actions. Kills and pushes! Fantastic! He's pushed this fella back towards that door. And killed the lady. Poor lady zombie didn't get a chance to attack. Oh, this is great. Look, there are now fewer zombies on the board than when I started the game. That's what I like to see. Killing, killing in the name of the Lord. Okay, unfortunately, uh, Nikolai has no more action, so he's still in that square. Does Carlos want to shoot this zombie? No, he has no choice, because the zombie will then react and then move back into the square. They just keep coming. So Carlos will have to knife it and hopefully get rid of it next time. Um, but at least put, by pushing them back, at least it's not damaging me. You know, if they're in the same square and they do their action, then they will hurt me, and that's good. To, it's good not to be hurt. And then we draw a card. And it's a yellow card. Lurching Gate. Propelled by some unnatural vigour, your foes lurch forward at alarming pace, snarling as they bay for blood. During the next player's turn, all enemies move one extra square. And this card remains in play for a round. So basically during Carlos's turn, everyone, all the zombies would move two squares instead of one. However, um, zombies only move if they can see someone. These doors are closed. So these, all these remaining enemies won't move this turn. So that was actually probably the best time to draw that card. Uh, because the current zombie that can see anybody is already in a square with me. Fantastic. So Carlos is going to take out his knife. Where, hey? Six inches of uh, pot steel. And on the first attempt, he's going to kill it! Oh man, I'm I'm sorry, Carlos. I was very cruel to you at the beginning of the game, but clearly that injury you sustained uh, woke you up and got you, uh, you know, in mind for the danger of the situation you're in. Because you, sir, are a killing machine. I should I wish I, I should have been keeping a tally. I think he's killed three now, and he's pushed away more, or a few as well. Well done, well done, and that means he's got three more actions. So, one, two, if I open the door, this zombie will react and move two spaces towards me, but then that would allow me to open this door without the zombie being one space away. I might actually do that. Final action. And then reaction, this zombie can see that there's an open door, and so it will head towards it at double speed. Uh, cool. And then we draw a card and hope for the best. My gosh, hope for the best. All clear. Loose cans roll away with the wind, monsters chasing their echoes and leaving you safe passage. Again, lovely, lovely flavour text. Nice to have an all clear, but inappropriate moment when... A zombie has literally just run at double speed to the open door right in front of my character who's drawn that card. Peaseward, hey homie, how you doing? Thanks for joining. How are things going on over at the WTC conspiracy? Or should I say WTC onspiracy? I'm here lurking, but I'm in my CompTIA A plus 1101 class. Wow, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for lurking. And I don't understand what that means. Uh, <laughs> what does that mean? 
please explain. Uh, the what the conspiracy is great. Fifteen episodes so far. I know. Real life gets in the way, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's the beauty of a of a podcast with friends is that you can do that. You can do it when you have the time, and uh, it's great. Well worth checking out. Uh, anyone who hasn't listened to Peaswad's podcast, What the Conspiracy, WT Conspiracy, uh, please do check it out. So the class you're in is pretty much knowing all about internal and external PC stuff. Ah, you're thinking of uh, thinking of building some PC for yourself? Building a super PC, going to mine some Bitcoin, or maybe, you know, become a serious PC gamer, give the old console a miss. Right. Pizod wants to become an ethical hacker. Huh. Cool. Yeah, that's that's a cool ambition and a cool career change. Nice. Oh wow. It's a ninety k starting salary. I mean, at the moment that appeals very very much. Um, and well done you for you know taking the time to retrain. I think that's. Problem I have is I don't have many skills and I can't bother to learn any new ones. So uh, anyway, Bob, the ones I want to learn aren't the ones that you can make money out of, like learning an instrument. <laughs> yes, Pizwad says, and working from home too. Glorious it is. 90k starting salary, working from home. Beautiful. Got it made. <laughs> All right. And I guess, yeah, even in times of um, economic downturn, in the digital age, every corporation is going to need cybersecurity. And they're going to want to pay for it. Right. Uh, sorry, where was I? Carlos had just done his thing, which was actually a really great turn. And now it's Jill's turn. Jill still doesn't have any ammunition in her gun, but she can move into this room. So she's going to one space, sorry, one action to move to the same space as she is meant to be in the same space as Mikhail. And then second action to open the door, third action to step into the room, uh, fourth action to step into this space with an item, which hopefully will be ammunition. Uh, the zombie will react. Move towards Jill. And then she will draw a card, which I'm fearful is going to be a yellow or a red. Oh my gosh. All clear. And the relentless wind still calmed. I guess she's opened the door and it went to an outside yard, so... Actually, no, we are still outside. If you look at the board, there's a kind of neon sign there and there's a building on fire. So we are outside. So all this talk about wind being calm, actually, is um, entirely appropriate because we were outside. I thought we were inside for some reason. I know, I'm just kind of... Normally with these kind of games, the dungeon crawler genre, you are inside a building. Um, Little Miss Stella says, Sounds amazing, Peace what It does. Uh, Peaswad says the Super Show boys are supposed to record their D&D campaign sometime in the near future. I told them that they should have you do the voiceovers for it. Oh, thanks, Peaswad. Uh, they did actually, back in the day, ask if I wanted to be involved. Um, uh, yeah, so, and D&D &D is great. I didn't realise that was, that's a Patreon goal, isn't it, for them? Patreon and YouTube membership goal. Uh, so glad to hear they've they finally reached that, and they're going to do it. That's amazing. That's that's really cool. They were great. They they did a D and D campaign one shot, wasn't it, to promote a game? I can't remember what it was. A few years ago, back when they were on a all time gaming, which is no longer a thing. But the Super Show guys, um, Jamie, Chris, and Jonesy, a fantastic, fantastic bunch of people to do role playing games with. Peaswell says, tag you in the Discord with a cool TikTok account. It's obscure board games. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to check that out as soon as I finish this stream. Thank you. That's amazing. Obscure board games? I'd like to hear about that. I bet there'll be some I haven't heard of. Um, I also wonder if there'll be some that aren't, that I would not consider obscure. Because uh, some people sometimes use obscure to mean old. And that's not necessarily the same thing. Anyway. Sounds great, thank you. All right, sorry, Jill had just used her four actions and it will draw the all clear, fantastic. Mikhail, he's gonna walk in the room. I might close this door behind me because I don't like, uh, just in case. So second action, close this door. 
Shoot the zombie. Shoot the zombie. Yeah, I want to shoot the zombie. Peaswood says, all right, now I have to go back to class. It's very dry stuff, but it'll be worth it. It is. It is. He's lurking. Thanks, Peaswood. Don't. Don't worry. It'll definitely be worth it. You'll make it through. Learn the PC stuff. Right, Mikhail. People, what should I do with Mikhail? Shall they attack this zombie with his gun? I feel like I'm still very aware of this big monstrosity right here who I'm going to have to defeat to escape. And I know that shooting him at range is probably the safest thing to do. And with a 1 in 6 chance of inflicting a wound with these dice and with oh no, 5 wounds... <laughs> Hot diggity down. Oh, shoot. I haven't been paying attention to this. Special rules, actually. Relentless pursuit from the Nemesis. If a tension card with a pizza box. I guess it's a wheel. Effect symbol is drawn on this enemy is not on the same tile as a character. Place this enemy on the same tile as the active character. Ooh, okay. Uh have I drawn any cards with that symbol on? I've drawn 18 cards, that's quite a lot. I don't think I have. I don't think I have. Too late now, anyway, but let's keep an eye out for that pizza slash wheel symbol, because that means Nemesis will turn up. That's terrifying. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mikhail is going to take a risk, take his third action to step in with the zombie, and fourth action to knife it. Uh, he pushes it away. Um, that's good. I mean, he's not going to get attacked by it. It's going to react by moving back into his space. All clear. Again, the lights are strong and bold and no pizza symbol, so we're okay. So it has been quite a kind deck actually. The majority of it is green, all clear. I guess that's because this is scenario one, uh, so it's meant to be a bit more gentle, despite the fact that Nemesis is on the board and these zombies are surprisingly tough to kill. They do feel, to me, from my memory of Resident Evil Zombies, they do feel tough to kill. And I, that's... It's definitely unique in board games. I haven't played a board game with this kind of, like, miniatures moving through rooms, killing zombies, where the zombies have been this hard to kill. I like how difficult to kill they've been. That's been quite refreshing. Um, right, so... Now it's Nikolai's turn. One, two... Three, four, let's just uh, get him out of reach of that zombie. Zombie will, ooh, attack Mikhail, sadly. Oh, it's, uh, but Mikhail gets to try to evade, and Mikhail has only one evade dice. Oh, I suppose he's a heavy tank, so he's gonna, yeah, oh dear. He did it! He evaded the zombie! Yeah, nice. And then the guy's going to draw another card. Oh, death rattle again. An undead hand clutches at you from the darkness, accompanied by a hideous rasp. Spawn a zombie in the same square as the character. Again, this is the second time this has happened to Nikolai. After spawning the zombie, performs a basic attack, which I forgot to do last time. And then spawn an additional zombie on this tile. On the closest, so two zombies suddenly spawn. Bloody great. Bloody great. Well, this guy's not been on the board yet, so he's going to be in the same tile as Nikolai. And then let's put this zombie lady in that square there, just to kind of block um, block Carlos's passage, so to speak. <laughs> ah, and then uh, Nikolai has to survive an attack. Um, he has... Two evade dice because he's a swift person. 
Oh, and he got two. He, he evaded with both. The zombie, it, the zombie presumably was distracted and worn out and discombobulated by having just appeared out of nowhere. Uh, and Nikolai easily evaded him. He, oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. Right. Carlos's turn. Oh, oh okay. It's tempting to do handgun, isn't it? Rather than just walk into the room with the zombies. But I want to conserve my ammo. So, action. First action is go in. Second action is attack this zombie with a knife. He pushes her. Let's push her into the middle of the room. That's fine because I think third action might be to close that door behind me. Is this a bad idea, closing all these doors? We'll see. Sorry, that was the previous card. I was just double checking, it didn't have the pizza symbol on it. Um, so that was his third action and his fourth action. Oh, he's going to shoot something. He's getting a bit low on the ammo, but I think he's going to he's going to shoot. Uh, he's going to shoot the zombie with Mikhail because Mikhail only rolls one die to evade, and I think uh, Mikhail need could do with a bit of help. And he misses. Of course, he misses. Go. Right, zombies react. Uh, she goes into Nikolai, and uh, this zombie attacks Nikolai. Nikolai tries to evade its attack. Uh, this is where it all goes wrong, people. Oh no. Both evaded again. Success. And then Mikhail is going to try to evade. Oh no. They were both successful, so it doesn't matter that they rolled two, because he was. Okay, we evaded the zombies. Well done. Okay. Sluggish, sluggish zombies. Right. Okay. Just realise both zombies that are attacking and failing to kill are these, uh, like, they look like a man, you know. That's not what I meant to do. Um, okay. <laughs> That's funny. There we go. Okay. Uh, okay, that's not what I meant. Uh, oh, gosh. There we go. Okay. Um, yes, and then we draw a card for Carlos. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. All clear. Loose cans roll away with the wind. Right, okay, phew. See, now I'm not even commenting on the unreality of the all clears. I'm just grateful when I get them. That's how absorbed in the game I am. It's because I'm so close now. I'm so close to this big boss battle and this escape tile that I just... Having all these zombies suddenly spawn is so annoying. Right, okay. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Let's go on with this. That was Carlos. Uh, now we're back to Jill. Jill is going to pick up another item, because maybe it'll be something useful. Oh, there aren't many items left. It's another green hat. Oh my gosh. Well, again, she's the great healer, um, and actually might be worth healing Carlos at some point, if she can get to him. She has... three actions left. Let's try to knife some zombies. So let's go into one action to go into there, and then spend two actions, one at a time, to kill this zombie, if possible. She killed it with the third one! fan bloody -tastic. She killed it, knifed it straight. Jill's good with the knife. She's good with a knife. Right. Uh, she's got another action. Uh, she'll move... Uh, don't open that door, because there's... I want to go into that room, because there's an item there, which looks good. But there's also a zombie, and I don't want to open the door, so we've got two zombies in the room. But she doesn't have any ammunition in her gun, so she can't shoot these zombies. She can only knife them. So moving... Closer to them seem oh uh, she's just as close as yeah, let's just move there. Why not? Towards this item. And <laughs> maybe she'll get some ammunition finally. Uh zombies react 
they will attack Nikolai. Nikolai has to roll for both of them separately. Yeah. Oh, he, he succeeded. So the first one failed, and then the second one. Oh. Oh no. See, that's annoying as well because I'm using the same dice. So I'm using. I've just used up a. I've wasted a successful damage roll on Nik Nikolai's evade attempt. So yeah. Um, wait, what happens? Uh, the zombie reference card when you roll those results. Just a piece. Of, just a damage. Okay, so Nikolai is taking damage. Oh dear. Nikolai and Carlos have had a rough time of it, haven't they? They have actually. They've had so many zombies to face off against. Even these ones spawned on Nikolai, didn't they? Um, oh dear, Nikolai second damage. I suppose. I mean, it could be worse. Could be worse. He's only taken one point of damage so far. Could be a lot worse. Right. So Mikhail's turn. Uh, Mikhail's going to try to help out. Uh, he's going to travel one, and then with his three remaining actions, he's going to try to knife these zombies in the face. He missed. He killed! And he missed. So he killed one of them. Nice. Just the zombie lady left. Uh, nice. Nice job. Nice job. Let's double check his rules. Oh, he can't take more than two damage. That's right. Um, the zombie lady react. Uh, she attacked. Uh, Nikolai, because Nikolai's got two evade dice, whereas Mikhail's only got one. So, uh, again, I could use those results for when I'm attacking zombies, not when I'm being trying to evade them. So he takes another point of damage. Ooh, Nikolai needs some, needs some health. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And now he's in the yellow zone, so his evasion will be less successful as well. Jill's going to have to do some healing, I think. Right, uh, now it's Nikolai's turn. Uh, Nikolai is going to knife this zombie lady in the face. No, he's going to miss. He's going to try again. He's going to miss again. He's going to try again. He's pushed her away. That's good enough for me. <laughs> it's good enough for me. Uh, he's got a first aid spray. Uh by three levels, so save that for now, because he's only lost two levels of health. But I think it's worth healing ourselves before we kick down the door to Nemesis. Um, Zombie Lady reacts. She's going to head for Jill, I think. Give Nikolai a bit of a break. And then... Actually, Nikolai's final action. Uh, sorry. Um... Was that I'm going to move Nikolai his final action into that space with Jill so that he can be healed by Jill with her green herbs or green herbs if you're American and then he can also help her like he can have four attacks rather than three attacks next time okay <sighs> oh that's another all clear nice lovely lovely jubbly Right. I'm relieved that Nemesis hasn't come out yet. I mean, I've still got to fight him, but I'm relieved. Uh, ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. Whose turn is it? <laughs> Gone. It's Carlos's turn. Um. Yeah, let's surround this zombie. Let's do it. Let's do it. Shaun of the Dead, and uh, everyone around. There's a limit of four characters in one space, so this is the maximum I can have. Everyone's around this zombie, just with a cricket bat, with a pool cue, <laughs> just slamming it. Although, actually, they're all using their special forces issue knives. And he's going to attack her with a knife. And he's going to push her away. Um... Oh, that's awkward, because now he's got two actions. And I kind of want to... Finish her off. Yeah, Carlos is going to go in after her with his third action and attack again and miss. Oops! So now she reacts and she attacks him. Carlos has two 
dice to evade. So he's also a speedy monkey. And he evades with both. Fantastic. So well done there. And then he draws a card. The deck's getting low. It's another all clear. Okay, so this deck is massively in favor of all clears. I guess, like I said, because it's the beginning of the main game actually is a campaign. These scenarios, they're, it's, it strings into a campaign, so you can play them on their own. Uh, this is the first one, so it's the friendliest, I guess, in the, as the all clears have suggested. Swift Oath says, don't stop me now, starts playing. Who put that on? It's on random. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sean the Dead reference for anyone who loves that movie. Oh, fantastic film. I haven't seen that for ages. I haven't seen that for a very long time. Yeah. I haven't seen Shaun the Dead since before I met my wife. Because she hates horror films. I just haven't watched many, if any, since we got together. That's crazy. I need to watch that again. Right. Uh... Where was I? Um, someone else's turn. It's back to Jill. Jill's going to go for this item. She's going to walk in, take another item. She's an item hoarder. She's just hoovering them up. Because maybe, maybe she'll get some ammo. Yes! Handgun bullets! Woo! And she's going to use them straight away. So that was one action to move, two actions to search, three actions to reload her gun. And she gets... Eight points. No, that's not Jill. That's Mikhail. I keep putting Jill's items next to Mikhail. So flip it, show that I've used it, and then increase her ammo by eight points. Nice. Everyone's loaded. Swift Over Slow says, classic film, one of my favourites for Shaun the Dead. Yep, it is. It was an instant classic, and I feel like it's been a while since we had an instant classic movie. Is it just me? Avengers Endgame, I feel like, was that sense of instant classic uh, in terms of its kind of pop culture. But then it's been the same way as Avatar, just because by default, because it was the biggest movie ever and everyone saw it. But it's not like Shaun the Dead, which was, there was that sense of immediately it was like, this is great and people will love this forever. And this will be many people's favourite films. I didn't think that was the case with Avengers Endgame. And certainly not with Avatar. Sure, they were the biggest films of all time. And sure, they were the ones that everyone saw. So everyone remembers them. They're a pop culture milestone. But they weren't instant classics, I don't think, in the sense that people would be like, this is this is going to be loads of people's favourite film. I, I, don't think, um, I don't think that's the case. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments, please. What, when was the last film to come out? That was an instant classic. Right, we've got one zombie lady to deal with in this room. Uh, Jill just spent her third action to reload. Um, let's use her fourth action to head back, because I think I'm going to head to this room here. There's a special item here from this deck, which is just one card. So I'm going to see if that, I'm assuming, it's a special item that will be useful against Nemesis. So, uh, Zombie reacts, attacks Carlos again. Carlos rolls his two dice to evade. And he successfully evaded. But I also rolled... I think as long as I roll an evade event... Uh, Oh, I did that wrong. So when there's multiple enemies in the same... Oh, right. Yeah, so as long as I roll one evade, they're successful. But actually, these different arrows reflect the number of enemies. Right. Okay. You don't roll separately for each enemy. Right. So you got that wrong. Whoops. Uh, let me just check the health thing. There's also... a Thing about the health. Uh... Maybe the health doesn't affect the difficulty of evading. Maybe I made that up. <laughs> oh, hello, Spiffing. Spiffing's in the chat. 
says, according to a quick Google, Inception was one such example recently. Hello all, by the way. Hello, Swiffing. That's a good shout. I'd forgotten Inception was out uh, in 2010, wasn't it? Yes, that was an instant classic. That was... Um... Has anyone seen it recently? What do people think? Has that aged well? I feel like... I haven't seen it for a long time, but I feel like that's the kind of film that might not be as good as I remember it being. Although that's partly through overexposure. Christopher Nolan has made a lot of films which are very similar now, and we're kind of used to his style and lack of character depth. Um, I do remember Inception, I mean, I watched it so many times when it came out back in 2010 and 2011, and yeah, I watched it a lot. And I remember thinking, this just gets better the more I see it. Even though the first time I saw it, I thought there was too much exposition and the characters lacked depth, but it was spectacular and very clever. But the more I watched it, the more I got out of it, and then the deeper it felt. Um, I don't know how I feel about it today. Uh, Swifto the Slow says, I can't remember the last time I saw a new film that I actually liked. Don't know if don't even know if I'm just getting old and stuck in my ways though. Oh, that's a shame. I feel like if I may talk about cinema for a moment, I feel like we live in a peculiar time. Uh, as someone who's a huge, huge, huge film buff and have been since I was a child. Uh, and have watched countless films from every decade, I can say for a fact that there have been periods of time where nothing good has come out. And I don't mean in my lifetime, I mean in the history of cinema. There have been periods of time where there hasn't really been many great films. And then there have been periods of time, a bit like the 1970s, for example, where there was a lot of crap, but what was good that was coming out was amazing. The Godfather films, Apocalypse Now, the original Dirty Harry, stuff like that. These these just instant classics, you know. Um, I think we live in a, something of a weird kind of bronze, not bronze, silver age of cinema where thanks to the internet, I think, um, studios and producers are more willing than ever before to make films that are very expensive purely for the fans and thanks to the internet and market research techniques they are very calculated to giving their target audience exactly what they want and i think that has produced two effects on the one hand we live in this weird golden age where for once to be honest and to be fair to hollywood People are getting exactly what they want. People are getting relentlessly, nauseatingly formulaic, endless um, superhero movies um, when they were fairly rare at the beginning because they were so expensive and to make and difficult to adapt. Whereas now we're getting as we're getting very close to just literally the pages on the comic book are being transferred to screen. Um, where, and you know, the resources and the talent behind comic book movies now is ridiculous compared to how it was at the beginning. You remember how many bad comic book movies there were in the noughties, particularly Marvel films? However, um, I feel like, uh, the flip side of that is that things are so calculated that they do feel calculated and that they're so geared towards a specific target audience more and more, even though there's this obsession with the four-quadrant appeal in films. And you can tell when films have been manufactured to appeal to as many people as possible. Nonetheless, um, things are so much... Things are so much built for their target audience now that we're not getting anything particularly original, or we don't get things that feel particularly original. And I think... So we live in this weird age where... If you're a fan of something, it's a golden age because Hollywood knows exactly what you're thinking thanks to the internet and market research and they're willing more than ever to spend lots of money and particularly in the age of CGI, they can do whatever the hell they like. We can have Lord of the Rings, you know, on TV, a TV series of Lord of the Rings. We can have it because technology allows us to because the internet is a thing. But on the other hand, 
if you're not a member of that target audience, it's very easy to be disappointed. And it's very hard to find a film from memory in recent years that has felt truly original or at the very least surprising. It's been a while, I think. And I think Inception is a great example of something that felt original and surprising and something that it's been a while since a film came along and said, hey, you might like this. And audiences are like, hell yeah, we like this. Whereas now it feels like a lot of films are made in a kind of, the audience won't like that. We won't do that. You know? Um, sorry, I've been missing a load of comments. Uh, people talking about, Spiffing has suggested uh, Frozen. Uh, Frozen was a phenomenon and people love it. That's true. But I think you either love it or you tolerate it. <laughs> Joker was very Joker was very good. Joker was very good, but also a bit overrated. I liked Joker, though. I, I want to watch it again, particularly now that they've announced the sequel. Um, but again, Joker's kind of... Joker is actually quite close to what I was just saying in terms of it's a safe bet because it's a movie about the Joker, but at the same time, it's an unusual film because it's just about the Joker and it's and it's um, very dark, uh, very dark. And I think the fact that it was such a huge hit shows that audiences responded to that kind of like, this is what we want. But I don't think Joker is an example of, because it's an adaptation of DC Comics Joker, you know, the most famous superhero uh, comic book villain of all time. I think um, it's not, that's not a case of, filmmakers in the studio coming along and saying hey bet you didn't know you'd like this that is joker is exactly what i'm talking about in terms of people getting what they want comic book movie fans wanted a dark r rated joker movie they didn't expect what they got which is why joker is the is a good example of a film that is that is really good and felt original because it was it wasn't just hey Heath Ledger, or obviously he's dead, but you know, it wasn't Heath Ledger's origin story. It wasn't um, Jared Leto's origin story, and it wasn't even just a spin-off with Jared Leto, which is how it originated, by the way, going around being all weird. It was like, let's take this comic book property and use it to tell this very dark and important story about mental health, <laughs> um, even though it had been done before with Taxi Driver in the nineteen seventies. Um, Spiffing says, I'd rather have a fantastic story than relying too much on great visual effects personally. I agree entirely. I'm very tired of Marvel movies for that. I've It's been years, since 2012 actually. No, 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 that's before. 2013 with Iron Man 3. Well, I think the last time I watched a Marvel movie and thought, um, and, and you know, didn't feel like I was watching a cartoon. You know, a, fo a photorealistic cartoon. The CGI is just over overtake swamped those films for so long even though it's top notch ilm do brilliant work on those films but it's just every you know, i'm looking at it and i can see the compositing lines around the actors even though it's very good compositing i'm just like i can see that the sky and the buildings behind this person the cgi i'm just looking at a cartoon um video games as well i i agree i think the video game industry has become a little is at risk at least of becoming unsustainable in terms of the amount of money they splash on these triple and quadruple a titles rather than just concentrating on making something good um christmas chronicles with kurt russell yeah i need to watch that i love kurt russell but i haven't seen that yet i'm a big kurt russell fan actually um and i remember people responding very responding very well to that so thank you little miss stella thanks for reminding me and it's hey we're getting close to christmas season but right now we're in spooky season and i've ranted long enough so let's get on with the spooky game uh, please do continue chatting. Re film recommendations, welcome. Uh, I will keep playing. And you know what? I've completely forgotten what I was doing. Whose turn was it? Zombie activated after Jill moved, didn't it? Yeah. And I just rolled an evasion and checked the rules and realized I was using those rules. I mis mis misinterpreted those rules, but it's fine. I haven't broken the rules yet. Everything that's happened so far has happened according to the rules, just even when I've not realized them. Lila Marcella also recommends the Christmas Chronicles sequel. I've forgotten they'd already done a sequel. Wow. Netflix do churn them out, don't they? Uh, so now it's time for Jill's 
tension card. And it's an all clear with the wind again. Jill likes the calm wind, doesn't she? Okay, now it is Mikhail's turn. Mikhail, he's got to dive in. Action one to step in. Action two to attack with his knife. <sighs> Action three to attack with his knife. He pushes the zombie away. Let's push into this corner. Uh, I don't know what to do, to be honest. Um, let me just step back. Let's just. No, no, he'll stay there because um, then he. Yeah, I'll... when the zombie reacts, which is now, she'll step in. I'll just check. Has he got any items? No, he's only got a knife and a gun. So there's no point. He does have a gun. He could shoot her. I don't want to waste my ammo, though. I think everyone needs to hammer into Nemesis. Okay. So she'll react. No, he will expend one ammunition point and hopefully kill her. Oh, I swear that was almost a thing. No, nope. so Mikhail's just wasted ammo. And she reacts, she walks in, and then we draw a tension card. All clear, and the wind is still calm. I'm this, this, we've had so much all clear, I'm terrified. Right, okay. Okay. Oh, I just noticed something. There's a little uh, ammo, ammunition reel here which says shotgun ammo. So I'm guessing this mystery, mystery item here is a shotgun. That sounds useful. That sounds useful. Okay. Oh, there's one more item card, but there's no more items on the board to pick up. Oh, that's how curiosity. Let's see what that was. Oh, it was more herbs. Okay. Um, that's cool. There are more items available in the deck than there were on the board, and that's that's good. That means it's more random. Although it's it does mean that you end up risking not getting the item like the ammo that you really want or really need. Okay, so now it's that was Mikhail's turn. So now it's Nikolai's turn. Nikolai's gonna. So, Nikolai is going to fall over. No, oh, but... sorry, everyone. Mikhail and Nikolai have just decided to to rave. They're just having a weird party. Okay, stand up, Nikolai. Oh my gosh, she just went through the floor. What's going on, mate? There we go. Oh, Nikolai. <laughs> Don't stop me now. I was on the radio and they're having a real kind of woo, break dancing rave. But no, they're um, Nikolai stepping in and he's going to attack with his knife. The zombie lady. For first attack. Misses. Second attack. Misses. Third and final action. Pushes her away. I mean, yeah. Sure. Whatever. Better to push away than for her to be able to attack, because she's in the same space as you when she reacts, but it's it's so annoying. But she's definitely going to that same space so I can keep killing her. Um, I just realised, the only zombies on the board now are these three lovely ladies. <laughs> Spiffing says breakdancing time with little Marge uh, Simpson dancing character. That's cool. Uh, Netflix is resurrecting the Teletubbies with a new series. What? I mean, they're yeah, they're they're legendary, I guess. So there's a market for it, but still, I thought that is yeah, that is not a sentence I expected to ever read. Netflix are resurrecting Teletubbies. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Spiffing says just announced. Interesting, is it? <laughs> I wonder if they'll make it more explicit about the um, sexualities and gender of the, uh, the Teletubbies. You know the old rumours. Okay, sorry. Uh, Nikolai just flubbed his entire thing. Zombie reacted by walking back in. The zombie lady. Only the ladies are left on the board. And it's all clear. And the firelight dances. The firelight from this building that's burning right here next to them. Lovely. Okay, we've only got two cards left in that deck. 
uh, I just reshuffle and start again. But yeah, so far so good. But that, mm, that does mean, assuming neither of these are bad cards, that I could spawn more zombies again before I've got off the board, and that could be bad. Hey, one battle pants, welcome. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday to you too. Thanks for joining. We are one room away from the exit tile, but also Nemesis, and we've got these zombies to take care of, and I think I do want this shotgun. So uh, Nikolai just went, now it's Carlos's turn. Carlos is going to knife this woman. Zombie. This, she's a zombie, Spe just going to specify. He missed with his first attack. He killed her with his second attack! Okay, Carlos has completely redeemed himself at this point. He's just killed so many zombies. Nice, he's got two more attacks. He's going to come... Two more attacks, two more actions. He's going to come over here, and Jill is going to join him to um, go into that room, I think. Uh, no zombies to react. Carlos just draws his card. It's all clear, and the firelight dances lovingly. That's great. Uh, and now... Jill's turn. Jill's going to go here. She's going to open this door. Swift the slow says, smell my cheese, zombie. <laughs> nice. Uh, and Jill's confronted by a zombie, and she's going to step in with her first, her third action, and then she's going to attack with her fourth. She's going to roll the die. And she kills it! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well done, Jill. Well done. Spiffing says, November the 14th it starts. Can't say I recognise any of the cast. What, Teletubbies? Oh, so they've already made it. They've announced it after making it. Wow, Netflix are quite good at keeping secrets, aren't they? Can't say I recognise any of the cast. What, as in the Teletubbies? Have they not even hired the child who was the baby and the son in the first series? Get them back as whoever they are, I don't know. Like a 30-year-old bearded male. Uh, okay, wow, I've cleared the board of zombies. He says, tempting fate. Oh yeah, just realised I've got to flip this. It's an amber one. Propelled by some unnatural vigour, your foes lurch forward at an alarming pace, snarling as they bay for blood. During the next player's turn, all enemies move one extra square. But I'm fine with that, because you know what? There's no enemies ex that can see me right now. Fan number logitastic. Okay, so it's Mikhail's turn. Uh, Mikhail can't reach the shotgun in time, but what he can do is get as far away as possible from this doorway. Somebody, so just so you know, the rules are now, this tile here with the two stripes is a special tile. As soon as a character steps onto that tile, we flip over this card here. This card here, as you can see, has Nemesis on it. So something happens underneath that tile. And of course, I assume we have to open this door at some point, uh, but I think everyone should shoot Nemesis, stay away from him. So uh, I... Want, uh, there's one character who's going to be the sacrificial character, I think, who's going to uh, step onto that tile. But I do need to heal people um, up a bit. And I think Nikolai's the most damaged. Yeah, Nikolai, Nikolai and Carlos, but Carlos has only taken one point of damage, so I think the green herbs will be useful. Uh, so that was Mikhail's turn, and it's Nikolai's turn. So it looks like it's going to have to be Carlos who um, opens the door. No. Uh, did I get that right? Yes, that's right. Uh, Carlos is not going to open the door, actually. Carlos is going to stay here. Actually, Nikolai's going to go there so that Jill can... Actually, no, he's going to... He was there. One, two, three... And then he can trade an item. Um, can he just take an item? Yeah. Wait a minute. He never loaded his gun. Uh, he's definitely going to load his gun. Um, 
bloody hell. Uh, so that was a six, wasn't it? So he's going to caution never load of his gun. That's good to know. So that was his final action. Um, well, I might as well um, have him here as well. Uh, Jill is... Oh, sorry. I should be flipping this deck, shouldn't I? Shuffle. So we have to draw it at the end of each turn. There are no zombies to react. I drew Michaels, didn't I? So now I need to draw Nikolai's. Please don't screw me over. It's an all clear. Nice. Lovely. Loose cans roll away with the wind. Again, with the wind. Monsters chasing their echoes and leaving you safe passage. Fantastic. Uh, and then we get round to Carlos. Carlos needs healing, so Carlos is going to use one action to step into the same space as Jill. He's going to use an action to take some herbs from her, and then he's going to um, use those herbs. He heals himself one level. So he's fully healed. Excellent. I think that's going to be very useful. Uh, when it, so he stepped in, took an action, and then he's going to step out again. And then he's going to draw a tension card, which is all clear. Fantastic. Jill is going to step in. She's going to search, pick up this item, this special item B, which is a shotgun with... Wait a minute. I don't have any ammo for this. I have no ammo for the shotgun. Well, that was useful. Yeah, I've never picked up any ammo for the shotgun. <laughs> And there's no more items on the board. The shotgun ammo counter comes default as zero. And I know that they were set to certain levels because uh, Carlos and Nikolai both had one bullet in their guns at the start of the game. And Mikhail and Jill had none. So she's got a shotgun which she can't use. Great. What was the point of that then? Well, that was uh, two actions and two more actions. She can come out here. Uh, that was a waste of time and a really bad waste of time because something could happen with the tension deck. Luckily, it's all clear. Um, so that's Mikhail's turn. I do need to heal up Nikolai. Nikolai can heal himself, I guess. Mikhail's coming over. Three actions. He's going to stomp on that tile. And now we're going to reveal this card. Ah, uh, ah, uh, we're entering the end, the end game. Swift over slow says, well, dang. Yeah. Why do they give me a shotgun with no ammo? Maybe because, maybe it's for the campaign. In the second scenario, you would get some ammo. That's ridiculous. Though. Jammed cartridge. The last shot didn't sound right, but there's no time to check the chamber. Place this card covering of one of this character's non-knife weapon cards. While this card is covering a weapon, it may not be used to perform an attack. If the weapon is reloaded, remove this card from the game instead of increasing the ammunition dial. Right. So that just adds an action. Right, so Mikhail's handgun is now freshly loaded handgun is now jammed okay <sighs> maybe he won't <laughs> maybe Mikhail won't open that door with his fourth action maybe someone else will do it because um yeah let's, let's step back let's step back that was bad to climb wasn't it all clear thank goodness 
Uh, now it's Nikolai's turn. Nikolai is going to heal himself. Uh, it's a bit of a waste because he hasn't taken enough damage. No, no, actually, no. He's he's going to he's going to take more damage before he heals himself to maximize the usage of that thing. He's going to take one action to move here, two actions to move here, three actions to open this door. Crap! Nemesis is right there. He's right in front of me. Ah! He's take his fourth action to run the hell out of there. Now enemies react. Nemesis move. Now he only moves once, but I believe he has. I think that may refer to the number of actions they have, so he can move and attack. However, the rules don't actually say. The zombies just have one written there, and the human characters don't have it written. So let's just double check the rules, see if they elaborate upon what that symbol means. They don't. No. No, I don't know what that means. Um, but anyway, let's read his thing. Resilient. Nemesis cannot be pushed away. Great. Relentless pursuit. Well, that doesn't matter anymore. Uh, variable. When Nemesis spawns, use the reference card that matches the current city data level. All right, well, that's, that's what this is. Um, right, so it's already sorted out for me. So yeah, enemies react, so he's going to move in. Uh, he's only got one movement range, so that's fine. Uh, she's going to move as well. Oh, but she's just there, this lady zombie next to him. Nemesis's partner, his, uh, his lady friend. What they've been doing in this small room whilst uh, all this chaos has been going on, all this fighting and screaming. Okay. Uh, that was the reaction to Nikolai, and then we draw a reference card, and it's all clear, thank goodness. Okay, we're in, we're in the boss fight, people. We're in the boss fight. It's now Carlos's turn. Carlos is healed, fully healed. He's gonna... Yeah, he's gonna take the maximum number of shots. He's got only six bullets remaining. Uh, but he's gonna use them all. He's gonna use them all. On Nemesis, who has five health. First shot! That's a push effect, I think. Yep, so ignores Nemesis, no effect. Second shot. Also pushes Nemesis back, which Nemesis ignores. Brilliant. And then he misses with his third shot. He's going to take his fourth shot. This is crazy. Carlos has had a really good turn of shooting, but it's had no effect. He does some damage with his fourth shot. Finally. Oh, just take one damage token. Oh my gosh. No, it's a bit of a... Uh, but that costs four shots to do one damage. So Carlos is going to have to go in with his knife soon. Swift Over Slow says, slightly off topic, but I'm curious to know, are you guys planning anything big for the 100th podcast? Good question. Very good question. Um... How we, we had we did 91 the other week, didn't we? And the next one will be 92 because we were hoping to finish season three on a nice round 90, episode 90. But then, blooming, I had to go and win the quiz, didn't I? So we had to have a season three finale with Martin facing off against Alex in episode 91, which has ruined our nice, neat divisions of seasons. But um, yeah, we were only nine episodes away from the big 100, the century mark. And I think the Super Show podcast, which started a couple of weeks before us, uh, has sailed past episode 100. Because <laughs> uh, they're much more, um, slightly more effective at uh, producing theirs on a reliable basis than, than we are. Uh, but then we also produce more, we have produced more videos of a non-podcast nature for our YouTube channel. That's my excuse anyway. Uh, Wait, so that was Carlos's entire turn, unloaded his handgun, pretty much, and did one point of damage to Nemesis. 
Nemesis reacts, moves towards the nearest enemy. He goes in. Boom. He... Wait a minute. Okay. Does two damage and pushes you away. Whoa, okay, just like him smacking you across the room. Uh, right, he just moved in. Okay, and he'll do his attack next time. And now it's Jill's turn. Jill is not in the same square as Nemesis. She might try to heal Nikolai. No, she won't heal him yet. Um, she will use her handgun rather than her shotgun to shoot him. She has eight bullets. So let's do it. Four actions. Oh, I forgot. This lady also reacts and moves in. She, she, whoa! Jill got a damage point on her first, her first shot. I like this die. This is a good die. Uh, and she pushed him away with a second. Again, accurate shooting, but has no effect against Nemesis. He's so bulky. She missed with her third and her fourth shot. Ah, it would normally push him away, but it doesn't do anything. Four shots just wasted. This ratio is not great. You know, um, it's taking four bullets to do one bit of damage to him. At this rate, he's going to be around for a while. Um, oh, did I forget to draw Carlos's thing? I think I may have done. Doesn't matter. Oh, of course, it's the death rattle. Ah. Oh. Spawn a zombie in the same square as this character. After spawning, the zombie performs a basic attack. Spawn an additional zombie on this tile on the closest thing. Ah, oh, bridge. Swift over the slow says, I need to catch up on the last few episodes, but I really enjoy just listening while working on draws or playing Minecraft. Always interesting subjects and fun hearing you guys shoot the shit together. Oh, thanks, Spiffy. Uh, Swifto, sorry. Um, I really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um... I'm glad you enjoy listening to us uh, talk about anything and everything. We, um... <laughs> Swifting says you're welcome. Ugh. Sorry, but Swifto, that was a... Misspoke there. Um, I didn't know it was you, by the way, when I was reading it. I just said the wrong name. Um, no, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here with me whilst I play this game. Thank you so much. And, um, you know... We'll keep doing them as long as people enjoy them. Uh, we enjoy it too. Uh, it's just uh, sometimes we don't. We try to do it every week. We're taking a break at the moment between seasons, but um, sometimes we just can't do it. You know, it doesn't work out because we're all working during the day. Um, I'm working from home, so you know I can do these daytime live streams. Um, the uh, just sometimes doesn't work out. Uh, you know, because we're working late, or children are a problem, or we're away for other reasons. Um, yeah. So thank you so much. And we love talking about these interesting topics. As long as you find them interesting, we'll find them interesting. We should do a live stream together, the three of us, sometime soon. I should force Martin and Alex to join me. Um, although maybe we shouldn't do a game like this. Maybe we should do a video game. <laughs> uh, where was I? I just forgot what I was doing. Spawning some monstrosities. Uh, yeah. Let's spawn another zombie lady. This, these are the, the, the ladies. Nemesis is ladies. All the zombies from now on will be ladies. And uh, so we spawn one in the same tile, which, who makes an attack. And I think... Uh, Nemesis also attacks because of the reaction. I forgot about the reaction. So, um... Uh... You know, it suddenly occurs to me that maybe what this symbol here means is the size of the model, because there's that rule about there only being four human-sized models in a square. 
Nemesis could count as four, and therefore Nemesis is always on their own in a square, in which case this attack means it can be made up to one square away, which would make sense, which means the knife that I've been using is also the same, can be made up to one square away. Let's just see uh, if the rules say anything about that. Oh, I missed a rule that if they unsuccessfully attack a model, they get bitten. <laughs> Oops, forgot that. That's a big one. Swifto says, with a face like that, of course the ladies love Nemesis. He has a nice smile. <laughs> he does have a <laughs> gorgeous smile. <laughs> Salty. Ah, oh, dear. Oh, that's good. I think I've, I've forgotten an important rule, by the way, folks. I apologize. If I fail an attack against an enemy, the enemy attacks me and does some damage. I think I've mostly managed to avoid that because I think every time I've attacked someone, eventually I've pushed them away. But I have just, yeah, I, I, yeah. Uh, this actually would have been a lot harder if I'd remembered that rule. Gosh, this game's been hard enough. It's been a real slog. I, I feel like it's been a real uh, struggle to get this far. Um, I'm going to assume Nemesis, based on his size of his base, counts as two people. He may actually count as four but he's taking up the space of two people. So I'm gonna say that this square is full and this lady just stands there rather than getting into this square. Um, not stands there, she moves, instead of moving diagonally from here into, from this square to that square, she's moved forward to try to get to these people here. Um, I need to make an evasion attack for Carlos. Um, oh shoot, he succeeds, thank goodness. Um, Uh, so, so that was the death rattle thing for Carlos. Now I'm going to draw Jill's card, which is all clear, right? So now it is Mikhail's turn. Uh, no, actually, sorry, Nemesis also reacts in Jill's turn. Nemesis attacks these two, and Nemesis uh, deals two damage. So Mikhail gets one evasion die. He fails. So Mikhail doesn't take more than two damage. In fact, his special rule says that if he takes two or more, he reduce the damage by one. So he only takes one damage. Good old Mikhail, he's a tough cookie. Uh, Nikolai gets two dice and he succeeds on one of them, which is great. He also rolls a damage. I feel bad every time I roll these damage results, this symbol here, when I'm rolling to evade, I get annoyed because I'm like, I can use that when I attack. So both of them are pushed back. Uh, I'm going to say pushed back here into this. He throws them into this corner. Uh, Nikolai does evade, so he's fine. And that's it. Okay, so now it's Nikolai's turn. <sighs> Nikolai has a gun. He's going to shoot Nemesis. I, th I just need to concentrate on Nemesis. I've done two damage already. I think that's pretty good. Um, where is Nikolai? He's over here, isn't he? How much ammo has he got? Seven. So he's going to attack Nemesis. Doesn't do anything, ignores that result. That's one action, two actions. Doesn't do anything. Again, everyone's shooting really well against Nemesis. I guess because uh, he's a large target, but my shooting against him has been surprising. Little Miss Stella says, I do love Nemesis. Would you like to be part of his bevy of beauties? The zombie beauties, but still beauties. Uh, that was two shots. Third, third action misses. Uh, now this is where the rules say something I overlooked, which is after a character has made an attack, enemies on the same or a tile linked by one or more open doors immediately perform a move reaction unless they were hit by the attack or in the same square as another character. So actually, I've 
I think I've been doing that wrong. Um, so she would move, she would move, and then Nemesis can't enter these spaces. So Nemesis is just going to stay there because he's too big to fit into these spaces, which have a limit of four people. Um, so yeah, that's something to take uh, take into consideration. Um, so that was his third action, wasn't it? Wasn't his fourth? That was his third. He missed. So he's going to attack. Yeah, one more die to attack Nemesis. Oh, a whole clip just, just wasted. Pushed him back, would have pushed him back loads. But no, this is bad juju, bad news, folks, bad news. Okay, now the reactions from all these zombies. Uh, she attacks and these two ladies attack as well. So now we know how these dice work. I only roll one evasion response. So uh, let's go with... Uh, how many evade dice does Jill roll? She also rolls two. So... Let's do it on Carlos. I want to keep Jill alive. I feel like I'm Jill and therefore should survive. So Carlos is going to take this attack, but now he ignores uh, this shortest um, evasion arrow. Oh good, he passes with both of them. Well, flying colours. Let's just double check that in the rules, make sure I got that right. Uh, when evading, if there are multiple enemies in the same square, instead of resolving an attack for each enemy, only one enemy attacks and the difficulty of the dice increases by one for each extra enemy. Against two enemies, a player must roll the dotted line arrow or a full arrow, and against three enemies, a player must roll a full arrow. Okay, so I did that correctly. He rolled the perfect result. Well done, Carlos. And then in this one, Nikolai is going to take the attack because Nikolai's got two evade dice, and he passes... Flying colours, yeah. Um, right, cool. Uh, Nemesis can't do anything. Based on the rules as I've been playing them, but we get to do another... Uh, it's all clear, nice. I like that. Drawing an all clear. The wind calmed whilst this is going on. It's not clear, there's a giant monster in front of you. Okay, but then look at them. Nikolai's looking the other way. No wonder he thinks it's all clear. Jill's the only one looking at Nemesis. Right. Uh, his turn is it? That was Nikolai, so now it's Carlos's turn. Carlos is uh, he's going to ignore If a character declares a non-attack action while in the same square as an enemy, the enemy attacks first. Uh Right, so I'm going to attack, but I'm going to use my gun to attack Nemesis. I'm, I'm determined. I'm going to use it my last two gun attacks to attack Nemesis. Right, first one misses. Uh, no one can move. Second one hits, but does a push. So that's all my ammo spent. I've got two more actions. I'm going to use them to knife a lady. Um, misses. Does she attack now? I think that's what it said. If you if you make an attack and I'm unsuccessful in the same score as an enemy, you're bitten. So yeah, Carlos has just received a wound. Uh, he's going to use his last action to attack again. He misses, so he's received another wound. Shoot. Maybe we should move out of that square. This is bad news. 
It's very bad news. Um, I could just try running past these people. I don't have to fight them. I think I might have to. I think it's time to run away. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, now the zombies react, uh, including Nemesis. Nemesis can't enter our squares because he's too big. Um, this zombie lady, again, Nikolai, will take it because he, um, he rolls two of eight dice. He fails with both. I mean, you can't get lucky all the time, but come on, man. Oh, yeah, okay, Nikolai's going to heal himself next time. He's one point away. He's two damage points away from being unconscious, which is not good. Um, uh, and then these two zombie ladies. I'll take it on Jill this time, because Carlos has taken a lot of damage. And she evades them both very nicely. Very nicely. Okay. It's now time to run away, I think. So, uh, well, first we draw the attention card. Please don't screw me over. Oh, phew, it's all clear. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Right. Um, I just said Carlos, so it's back to Jill. Jill's going to make a run for it. Sorry, guys. Jill's going to make a run for it. Uh, so, before she moves out in the square, these zombies get an, get an, an attack. Uh, kind of attack of opportunity in true dungeon crawler style. So she rolls her evade. She does evade. Yes. Sorry. Yep. She evades. Which means she can move out with her first action. She's going to move with her third, her second action. She's going to pop a shot off at Nemesis, I think, um, with her third action, just to see uh, what she can do. Uh, she misses. Uh, everyone gets to move. Nemesis can't move into those squares, so I guess he's going to move into mine. Maybe that was a bad idea. Swifto says, you mean bravely retreat from the battlefield? Yes, that's what I'm doing. And I realize I just made a mistake by attacking Nemesis, because when I attack, they um, pursue. So now I'm in the same square as Nemesis, which means to move out, I'm going to have to avoid an attack again. So let's do that and hope this works. I do. Phew. But he's still going to chase me. That was a really dumb move, wasn't it? Oops. And now all the zombies react. Uh, Nemesis is going to chase me, I think. Shoot. And this zombie will attack again. Nikolai. No, let's take out Mikhail, because Nikolai can't... No, no. Nikolai. He's got twice as much opportunity to evade. So, And he evades with flying colours. He evaded that z zombie lady. Nemesis is a gaggle of... <sighs> Nemesis is a pimp. Right. Um, and then these other two... Again on Carlos, because he's all alone. I should hate them. Ha! Huh, easy peasy. Okay. So now it's Mikhail's turn. Mikhail is also going to skedaddle, I think. Although he's skedaddling into Nemesis now. Uh, Maybe I should just kill her. He's going to try killing her with a knife. With his first action. He pushes her. Pushes her into Carlos. <laughs> uh, no, he's going to push her into that square then. Okay, that was successful. And then he's going to um, move with his second action, third action, and fourth action, because he can take the damage from Nemesis. Uh, right. We just need to get onto this square. That's all I need to do. Let me just double check that is actually all I need to do. Players win if each character has escaped. Character is placed in the same square as the escape token. Their model is removed from the board. They don't even have to do an action. They just get off the board. Sweet. Right. Um, uh, wait a minute. Did I draw a tension card for Jill? I don't know if I did. Oh, no. It's cornered. A vicious snarl sends a shiver. Locate the tile closest to the active character where there are enemies, but no characters. 
oh that doesn't remove the enemy on the tile and place it on it but there's no there's enemies on every tile with characters so that's uh that's fine i can ignore that one phew um reactions from nemesis and the women she's going to pile in to the nearest enemy poor carlos and they're all going to attack him carlos is in a bad way now he needs he failed okay so he just took another damage oh dear he's close he needs some healing uh ah oh, jill needs to stay on the board to heal people crap because nikolai can heal himself which i think he's gonna do with his first action um mikhail's got health left for now nemesis attacks by the way um so Mikhail, do you evade? You do. Nice. Jill, do you evade? You do. Nice. Thank goodness. Uh, right, Nikolai is going to... What is Nikolai going to do? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, first, I draw another cut. Sorry. Keep forgetting that. Lurching gate. Everyone moves an extra square. Oh, shoot. So, um, that's worrying. Because I want to escape from these zombies, but they're going to be moving fast. Okay, okay, let's, um, let's figure that out, shall we? Nikolai. First thing he's going to do is heal. He's going to use his first aid spray to heal three levels. Oops, didn't mean to click that. Um, which means, let's fly over to his health thing. He goes from the yellow to one, two, three, fully healed. Nicely done. Uh, then that was his first action. His next action is, he can't enter this space until Nemesis is out of the way. So he's gonna go one, two, and no, maybe he'll go, there so that was the second action and he'll pop a shot i think he's got shots left he's got three shots yeah so he's going to shoot nemesis with two actions a good result but nemesis ignores it ah missed again okay annoying so that was two shots down Now the uh, zombies all attack, so Carlos gets to attempts to evade. This is going to go badly, isn't it? He fails to evade because he needs the short arrow, so he's taken. Oh my gosh, he's in the danger zone! Danger zone! I shouldn't have left. That was unfair of me to put pile them all on Carlos. Now I'm screwed because Carlos has no way of healing himself. He needs to get out of there. Oh crap. This went badly. If I'd shot those zombies instead of Nemesis, I might have been able to push them away. Anyway, uh, Nemesis attacks Mikhail. Mikhail fails, so he takes one damage. Which is still pretty bad. But then he gets pushed away. Oh no. Do I push him onto the tile? That lets him escape. Or do I keep him around? Because he doesn't have a healing item. But he does have seven bullets left. <laughs> Those bullets might come in useful. Uh, Jill, does she evade? I kind of want her to not evade now. She evades beautifully. <laughs> uh, ooh. Ooh. And she's got that special rule, right? Her special rule, which is if... Oh, when she rolls an evade when she's performing an attack, and she can be placed in the adjacent square after... Right, okay. All right, not when being attacked. Okay, that's a shame, because that'd be cool if she could do a kind of combat roll away from Nemesis. But I guess she's locking him in place, at least. Uh, he is blocking the way. Um, but... Um, 
Yeah. Mikhail, what happened with that? Or maybe I want to push Mikhail back into here, actually. So that he can shoot these way these women. <laughs> yeah. Jill just keep Nemesis occupied. Right. Um that was Nikolai's turn, so now it's Carlos's turn. Carlos is gonna have to knife these ladies. Right, first attack. He gets bitten though if he misses. Oh crap. Crap on a donkey bike. And Jill's the one with the healing stuff. This has gone badly wrong, people. Uh, he misses, so he's bitten. So he's 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 out. He's he's unconscious. Crap. So Jill's the one with the healing stuff. Ah, oh, she's furthest away, and she's stuck with Nemesis. Fiddlesticks. Carlos, I mean, I, I, I did put that third zombie in there, which was unfair of me. But still, Carlos, you have began the game badly. You performed brilliantly in the middle stretch, and now you're ending it badly. I need to get all of you off the board. And Carlos is down, man. Okay, okay, let's think about this. Let's think about this. I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, the zombies react, but he's down, so I guess they move towards the nearest person. So they're all piling in on Nikolai, which means Nikolai is now screwed. Um, who knew the zombies would be a bigger problem than Nemesis? Right. Um, and Nemesis attacks Jill who fails to evade. Crap, she takes two damage. And gets pushed away. But I'm going to get her pushed back into the room. Thanks, Nemesis. And that feels more in character. If Nemesis knows they're trying to escape, he's going to pick them up and throw them back where they came from. Um, ooh, she's taking two damage, though. That's really rad. Um, she can't afford to get damaged again. Right. So now we're all here. Uh, we need to rescue Nikolai. Uh, I'm sorry, rescue Carlos and Nikolai. Uh, right, so Nikolai, it's not Nikolai's turn, it's Jill's turn, in fact. Peace on earth and goodwill toward men. What do I do? Um, Jill is going to attack these zombies around Nikolai because he needs the help. She's going to use a hand. She's got ammunition, right? She's got four ammunition left, yeah. She's going to miss. Which gives Nemesis the chance to walk in, which is really annoying. And shoot again and miss. And she's going to shoot again. Oh, actually, she could use that evade result to move to an adjacent tile, which she does. She's going to move here. And she's going to push one of those zombie ladies back into this corner. Nice. Um, actually, no. After that... No, that is good. That's good for Nikolai. So I'll keep that. So that was three shots, I think. But she's going to use her final action to use her magical first aid spray, the shock repellent bat spray, Robin, um, to resuscitate Carlos to the caution level, which is the middle one. Hey, he's back on his feet. I think. I hope. Maybe if we <laughs> if we can get him there. It'll be a miracle. Come on, dude. There we go. Carlos is back up. A bit dazed, but he's back. Okay. Now the zombies act. Oh, they head for the nearest enemy. Um, it should be Carlos again. Um, 
Nemesis attacks Mikhail. How does Mikhail do on the evasion? He fails. Mikhail gets tossed. I'm going to toss him back to this square here. Uh, try to distract Nemesis. And he's going to... Uh, take a damage. Mikhail is struggling a bit. Um, and then the two zombies attack Nikolai. Nikolai evades. Thank goodness. Okay. Thank goodness. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Sorry. Phew. Um, got a bit confused there for a moment. Um, so now I just did Jill's turn. So now it's Mikhail's turn. Mikhail's going to shoot Nemesis. Why not just unload his clip? He's got seven ammunition left. He's going to just shoot Nemesis. Uh, Nemesis will come for him, which is unfortunate. Uh, first roll. He does damage! Nice. Second roll. Oh, so close. Nemesis ignores it. Third roll. Ah, oh, hitting him. Which is good, because because if his if his roll is successful, then the enemies who aren't in the square with another person don't move. And that's he, he's hitting Nemesis, which is good. Um, so Nemesis isn't moving towards him. Um, final roll, please. <laughs> yes! Fourth point of damage. Nemesis is one point away from being killed. Mikhail, your beauty. Your beauty. Okay. Uh, that was incredible, Mikhail. Uh, four points of ammo spent, but well spent. 50%. Well, 100% success in terms of dice rolls. He was hitting him. It's just that Nemesis ignores the results that would normally push him back. Amazing. Now everyone reacts. Uh, Nemesis will definitely go into this square here. With Mich Oh, oops. <laughs> Nemesis is down. See, he's, he's so stunned by the attack uh, that he's, he's down. Oh, he's side on now. Ooh, can I? Oh, there's Nemesis's face. Your pretty face. Look at you. Oh, you're so pretty. And everybody attacks. Uh, so Carlos has to evade again. He succeeds, thank goodness. He also rolls a hit, which, a damage token, which I wish we would save. And Nikolai, poor Nikolai, fails! Ooh, and takes damage. But he was fully healed, so that's fine. Few, few, few. Um, right. Uh, what am I doing, people? What am I doing? So close to the end. We just need to get onto this tile here at the bottom. This little tile with the escape symbol. Everybody's standing. Is it worth just trying to escape? It's now Nikolai's turn. Nikolai is... Nikolai's going to make an attack roll. And miss and get bitten. Crap. Nikolai is going to move away and try to evade the attack. Which he fails. Why did you not swap those rolls? So he's just making two points of damage. Uh, does Nikolai have any ammo left? He has one shot. He's going to use it on the zombies behind him. Try to get rid of one of them. And he misses. So they move. I'm going to split them up though. And now they react and attack. Uh, oh, I forgot. Again, I forgot. It's getting so chaotic, I'm forgetting to draw these tension cards, but it's fine. Um, Nikolai rolls two dice to evade. He succeeds. Couldn't have rolled that before, could you? Uh, Jill also rolled two dice to evade. She succeeds wonderfully. Um, so does... 
Carlos, he also succeeds, thank goodness. Oh, and um, Mikhail <laughs> succeeds. Mikhail succeeds to invading uh, Nemesis attack. Fantastic. Okay, phew. Oh man, this is getting so close. Spiffing says, just upload an Awesome Wells GIF emote to 7TV. <laughs> nice, thanks. <laughs> awesome Wells. Ah, the French champagne. Which one did you upload? Da da da. Uh, da, da, da. Right. Um, sorry, I forgot what I was doing there. That was uh, Nikolai's turn, which went quite badly, really. Um, it could have gone worse. Everyone evaded the attacks, but it could have gone better. Um, so now it is... Let's draw a retention card. Phew, all clear. Thank goodness. Now it's Carlos's turn. Carlos is going to try to stab this woman in the face. He pushes her back into that room. He's going to... That was fine. That was great. He's going to lock this door um, with his third, his second action. Third action, he's going to move here. Fourth action, he's going to open this door. I don't want to take any more damage. Uh, okay, uh, everyone makes a thing. She's she's not going to act because she's behind a closed door. These two are going to attack. These three, sorry, are going to attack. So Jill evades, thank goodness. Nikolai evades, thank goodness. Mikhail. Oh, he takes damage. Crap. So he takes one point of damage. He's in the danger zone. He's almost out. And I don't have any more resuscitations, but he gets pushed. So even though he's got ammo left, he's getting pushed onto the exit tile. And Nikolai has left the building. Nikolai is limping out with his almost dead health, or almost unconscious. He's out of there. Okay. Um, and then we draw a card. And it's an all clear, thank goodness. Right, so... Um, that was Mikhail's out. Uh, that was Carlos's turn. So now it's back to Jill. Jill is going to. Um... Attack this woman with a knife. And she fails, but she gets to evade with her attack thing. Great. Now she can. Actually, no, she's going to evade into this one here. Attack this woman with a knife. She's going to miss, but she's going to use that evade to... Oh, actually, does anyone need healing? Everything's all right. Jill, yeah, everyone's in the middle, so... Actually, no, Nikolai's in a bad way. Um... Yeah, she's going to do that, and then she's going to try to heal Nikolai with this green herb. Yeah, so you're going to heal Nikolai. So everyone's in middle health, which is not great. Um, but everyone's alive. Oh, wait, who used the first... Did I use this? Yeah, I used that in my first aid spray. Because um, Nikolai healed... Yeah, I only had two, and Nikolai used his on himself, and Jill used hers on Carlos. Okay. So Jill uh, attacked and failed and moved, attacked and failed and moved, healed Nikolai. Does she have any ammunition left? She has one shot left. She's going to try to kill the one in front of Nikolai. Yeah. And she pushes it away. Uh, pushes it towards Carlos, I guess. I think Carlos might be able to push it through the door. Okay, reaction time. Uh, this lady's going to come and attack Jill. And, 
Nemesis is going to come and attack. Um, uh, Nikolai, he's going to turn to face him. Oh dear, because Nicholas, if Nik Nikolai fails, he's going to take two damage and he'll be in a bad way. Okay, so Nikolai is going to try to evade Nemesis, which he does, thank goodness. Jill is going to try to evade her zombie, which she does, thank goodness. Carlos is going to try to evade his zombie, which he does. Fully, completely, fantastic. Phew. Spiffing says, made one of Orson scratching his forehead during the drunk outtake. Might call it Orson Despair or something. Yes, that's a great, that's a great idea. It's a great shout. Orson Despair. <laughs> right. Um, does it do anything? Okay. Okay. We're close here. We can do this, people. We can do this. That was Jill's turn, I believe. Um, I have to draw a card. Please don't be... Please... Oh, phew. It's green. Uh, so now it's Nikolai's turn. Nikolai's gonna run? He's out of ammo, isn't he? Oh, he's got one shot left. He's gonna try to run. Which he succeeds in doing. So that's one. Two. Action two. He's going to shoot with action three. That nemesis. <gasps> that was almost a damage one, but it wasn't. It was the one that he ignores. Uh, four. Is Nikolai going to get off the board? The two Russians get off the board. And it's down to the others to try to... I don't know, he's tempting to stay here to try to draw Nemesis. Nah, he's off the board. Nikolai's off. This is a bad idea, isn't it? This is a bad idea. Leaving Jill and Carlos to fend for themselves. Okay, enemies react. Nemesis is going to go join Jill, trying to make her one of his bitches. And enemies attack. So Jill and Carlos have to roll evasions. Jill fails. Crap. Jill is... she can't take a hit from Nemesis. If she does, she will lose. Okay. Uh, Carlos succeeds. Amazingly. Could have split those dice rolls, please. Rather than getting two evades, given one to Jill, please. Oh, actually, oh, Jill has this special rule, last escape. Um, first time she becomes unconscious, place her health track on danger and place her in an adjacent square. Great. She is the, oh, great. That's quite nicely narrative. So she's, as the heroine, she she is kind of the person you want to be facing off against Nemesis last because she has, like in this situation, if he damages her, she'll go into, she'll become unconscious. But actually, he'll be she'll be able to, drag herself one space away and hopefully get away. Um, cool. So that was Nikolai's turn, now it's Carlos's turn. Carlos is going to try to attack this woman. He failed, so she will damage him. That wasn't smart. He's just going to try to move away, run away, which he succeeds in doing. Although that does leave Jill very vulnerable. Um, He's, that was his second action, third action, fourth action. Carlos is just leaving Jill to her fate. <laughs> the men are all off the board. Um, what the hell is Jill going to do? Um, everyone attacks. Jill's just, this zombie lady can't um, get into the space because it's filled. Jill evades. Yes, she does. Fantastic. Thank goodness. Um, Jill is going to try to get out of this space, I think, because she can't really take damage from anyone and survive. So, uh, sorry, and draw Carlos's attention card, which is oh, cornered. 
Locate the tile closest to the active character where there are enemies but no characters. Remove the enemy on the tile with the highest threat level. Oh, that's what that is. I just realized that's um this symbol here is their threat level. Okay. Uh right, so now having shut that woman as a zombie away, she's gonna teleport herself. Um here. Oh, what a terrifying situation to be in. Just you versus Nemesis and his gang of bitches. Pardon my French. Okay. Um, well, it's Jill's turn. She's going to try to move with one action. Evade. Please, please evade. She does. She evades. Thank goodness means she's free to take a second action into that space and a third action into that space and she's off the board did it nemesis is just like oh where'd she go and the zombie bitches are like eh sorry boss we didn't know we had no idea oh made it everyone made it off the board A nemesis was down to. I almost killed Nemesis. Five, five wounds, and I had four inflicted on him. Which, but he just soaked up so much. Even though I had ammunition left, particularly Mikhail at the end, he could have unloaded a whole gun. Swifto says, "Woo, -hoo! yes, that's how I feel." Um, wow. Genuinely, I don't know how you felt listening to me or watching me, but for me, that felt like combat was not the solution to that. I had to run, and I'm amazed it worked, but clearly the game has been designed that way. The game is, it's a survival horror game, ultimately, as the Resident Evil games are, even though they have lots of combat, and this says, you know, um, this is the beginning, this is the first scenario, it's the starting point. Your object is to simply get the characters off the board alive. That's the objective. Not to kill anything. Not to achieve any... I mean, in later scenarios, there are secondary objectives, you know, like pick up this item or turn on the power or something. But this one was just get off the board alive. And absolutely, that felt like a survival game. And that's the first time I've had that experience, I think, in a board game. Certainly a zombie-themed board game, because there's some favourite famous ones, there's like, I think it's Dead of Winter and Zombicide, and running away never felt like a solution. Certainly in terms of the end game. I mean, the, the objective is normally in those games are to get to the end tile and escape. But when you're doing that, particularly in Zombicide, the process is normally kill everything and then step onto the, the final tile, the exit tile. Um, Running away from an enemy is not something I'm used to doing in board games like this. Swifto says, seems like an enjoyable game. Would it be nice if you were able to kill Nemesis, though? Yes. Sorry. I let you down. Bad entertainment. I should have tried to kill Nemesis. I just wasn't willing to risk it <laughs> with Jill. She only had... Um... So so I only had Jill on the board, right? She had one... Actually, no, she had one action left. You're right. Okay, her penultimate action. She's going to shoot Nemesis. Let's see what happens. Do you see that? Do you see that dice roll? Do you see it? That's a wound. That's a wound on Nemesis. That's five wounds. That's a dead Nemesis. She did it. She killed Nemesis. Off the board. Just his lost and confused bitches left. And then her final fourth action off the thing. Yeah. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um. <laughs> hey, Aaron watching. Thanks for joining. Um, <laughs> awesome wells on fire. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't have the confidence, Swifto, to do that before I fled earlier. I was just so fixated on getting off the board. I didn't think to take the risk to shoot Nemesis with my last action. I didn't think it would work, but look, it worked. 
Swifto says that was the end credit scene. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, I was just going to say the reason I calculated that and decided not to take my final shot because partly I thought I was out of ammo and but mainly because look, she has this is how much health she has left. Nemesis does two damage, so that's one, two. And then yes, admittedly, she would be um, her special rule means she just stay on the board with this. But one piece of damage and she's out. And I just didn't want to take the risk by staying and fighting. But I thought she was out of ammo. But I didn't realise she could shoot. So no, no. as soon as I saw that, when you pointed that out, thank you. Um, I rolled it back, did a penultimate shot with the useless shotgun. What the hell was that about? Why was there a shotgun? I wonder if that's a setup issue on Tabletopia. Maybe there's meant to be ammo in the shotgun? Or maybe... More likely, actually, this is just the first scenario. So in the next scenario, you'd start with the shotgun and you'd find some ammo for it. Unfortunately, on Tabletopia, this is the only scenario you can play. Um, you can't get further than this. So without buying a copy of the game. Uh, subscriber Aaron Watchin says, hey, hey, fantastic game. Oh, were you watching all along? You keep keeping quiet. Thanks for, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining. I mean, I'm going to give this a thumbs up. To my surprise, a licensed game <laughs> that's actually good. I feel like this uh, captures a lot of what Resident Evil 3 is about. Um, the only thing it's lacking at the moment is in this scenario, Nemesis was waiting for me, but he wasn't chasing me, which is obviously a big thing that Nemesis does in the game. I, we know that there's special rules that's printed on his, car, his character sheet that... Um, this relentless pursuit. When you're drawing cards from the tension deck, if that symbol comes up, Nemesis will spawn next to you. He'll just turn up next to you, which is terrifying. But that symbol is not on any of the cards in this deck. I've, I've drawn them all now. And uh, yeah, it's not on that one. It's not on that one. It's here in the bottom, bottom corner, this like little circle. And his is a pizza. So this is close. This is close to it, but it's not it. There's another line cutting down to make the pizza a pizza. So, um, yeah, so in this scenario, Nemesis doesn't chase you. He just waits for you. But, I mean, that's kind of how it works in the game, right? You you play through a tutorial level or two until, in the video game this is, and then um, you bump into Nemesis for the first time for your boss fight. And the solution is to run away. And that's exactly how it felt. I'm I'm chuffed. And I'm pleased Swifto reminded me. So I killed Nemesis there. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me for this pretty epic three hour session. Um, honestly, thought it was going to be a simpler, easier game than it was. That was harder, but not in a annoying way, in a genuinely like, this is a challenge way. Um, I can only imagine later scenarios being really difficult with more enemies, bigger maps, uh, specific objectives to achieve, and presumably depleting resources. I felt like I barely had enough resources there to make it through that game. Barely. And I assume later scenarios are less generous with their healing items and their um, ammunition. Aaron says, uh, caught it halfway in, I tend to watch long. Thank you for streaming. Well, thank you for watching. Thank you all. And hopefully I'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Uh, let me know if you have any suggestions for games on Tabletopia that I could stream. Uh, Swift Over Slow says, cheers for the stream. Was fun. Bye all. Thank you. And it was fun. Thanks all for keeping me company. And see you next time. Bye for now. We'll get there eventually.